presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Arizona. Baseball's best home team is home all weekend to welcome in the first place Milwaukee Brewers the Diamondbacks after taking all three from the Padres for their fourth series sweep of the year will send Randall Delgado to the mound to face Gilbert native Zach Davies it's Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Good evening from Chase Field and welcome to the broadcast Steve Berthium and Bob Brenly along the way the Diamondbacks off to their best start since 2002 yesterday was game 62 so that means as of tonight Bob exactly 100 games to go they're a playoff team right now what do you think about where they stand I like where they stand excuse me right now uh, obviously a lot of baseball left to play but it's never too early to start scoreboard watching of course the Washington Nationals their magic number is probably about four by now they're running away with the East. Central Division a little bit of a surprise the Brewers atop the division and same thing in the West with the Rockies but the Diamondbacks and Dodgers right there behind them. Well the first of three against the first place team Milwaukee comes in as you just saw leading the National League Central a bit of a treat for you here tonight during batting practice today D back skipper Tori Lavella wore a microphone for us at Fox Sports Arizona and here's a little bit of a preview of what you'll see tonight. You got a shotgun boom. This is when the big problem starts. Then I wouldn't know what to do. I don't know how to clean it. I don't Have know how to cook it. Have you ever cooked chicken on a grill? Yeah. Okay, cut the thing apart, take all the guts and grow stuff off of it, throw it on a fire. That makes me want to you throw can, up right now thinking can. about that. Like, there's no way I could do that. Well, there you go. Cooking tips from the bullpen, just what you need. We are set for baseball at Chase Field. The Diamondbacks and the Brewers. First pitch is coming up next on Fox Sports Arizona. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by Gila River experience winning like you've never imagined at the Gila River casinos Lone Butte Wild Horse Pass and Equiva by Jack in the Box and the Jumbo Jack a home run for your mouth by the donor network of Arizona sign up save lives visit donatelifeaz.org and by CenturyLink connecting you to the power of the digital world.
Sports Arizona is brought to you by your Valley Honda dealer, where you get more standard features for less money. Buy Oregano. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano, your neighborhood pizza joint, location statewide. Buy Gigablast Internet from Cox. Get ready for the gig life. And by State Farm, here to help life go right. Well, things are rolling lately at Chase Field. Diamondbacks coming off their fourth series sweep of the season. Took all three from San Diego. Outscored the Padres 32 to 9. And now Randall Delgado welcomes in the Milwaukee Brewers. First pitch is next. is open for business here at Chase Field 102 degrees but pretty comfortable in for a lovely evening here in downtown Phoenix it's the Diamondbacks and the Milwaukee Brewers Brewers come in leading the National League Central here's the lineup for the brew crew it's brought to you by your Valley Chevy dealers Eric Sogard and his self-proclaimed nerd power will lead it off for the Brewers today he'll play down at third base Domingo Santana in right field Eric Thames will be at first base Aaron Perez out in left field Manny Pena doing the catching tonight Jonathan B.R. at second base. Brett Phillips out in center field. <laughs> Orlando Arcia at shortstop and right hander Zach Davies on the mound. One of the best laughers in baseball. We <laughs> hope you'll see that over the course of the ball game. Your Ram truck starter for the D backs, Randall Delgado. He has been outstanding in a starting role. It was supposed to be just a one day spot start, but Randall has been so effective in the rotation, Bob. They've stuck with him. Yeah, if you think about it, uh, initially it was uh, Randall Delgado and a bullpen day. Now it's just Randall Delgado taking the ball as a starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks. Tori Lavella really likes what he's seen from Randall right, Delgado over his last two starts. And keep in mind, one of those was the Edinson Volquez no hitter. Randall's thrown 11 innings, giving up only two runs. All right, on defense for the D-backs, brought to you by Nationwide Vision Centers. David Peralta back in the lineup out in right field tonight. Gregor Blanco in center. Daniel Descalso over in left field. It'll be Jake Lamb and Nick Ahmed on the left side of the infield. Chris Owens, Paul Goldschmidt on the right side tonight. Jeff Mathis doing the catching for right-hander Randall Delgado. Nick Lentz is the home plate umpire tonight. He's got the balls and strikes. Trip Gibson at first base. Dan Isoni at second. And the crew chief, Brian Gorman, is at third. Brewers coming in here leading the NL Central by a game and a half over the Cubs who are beaten again by the Rockies today. Milwaukee three games over 500 at 32 and 29. Eric Sogard in at third base leads it off against Randall Delgado when we're set to go the first of three the D-backs and the Brewers and there's ball one. 
Zogar 22 games with Milwaukee this year. He's produced 4 14 and 3 home runs. Skies it up into that light sky. Chris Owings at second base tonight. One away. Time here, BB, for your Valley Honda dealers. Key to the game. Well, his teammates call Randall Delgado Randy, and Randy's been handy. You know, you lose a key member of your starting rotation, you're never quite sure how you're going to plug that hole, but Randall Delgado has been Johnny on the spot, been very handy. Well, you think about where they are now with Delgado and Godley in terms of the depth in the starting rotation, minus Shelby Miller, and of course, just for the moment, Taiwan Walker. The red hot Domingo Santana. Belts the first pitch he sees into the left field corner. He has been doing a whole lot of damage lately for Milwaukee. It's a one out double. That's his 10th of the year. So he's hit safely now in nine straight. Now this Brewers team uh, very much a group of hackers. They go up there and swing at anything close to that strike zone and they try to do some damage when they do swing. Very susceptible to change ups up and down this Brewers lineup at Randall Delgado change up could turn out to be a big pitch in the ball game tonight. Eric Thames always a threat to go deep 268 and 16 home runs. The backs have the shift on the overload the right hand side. Thames homered yesterday in the Brewers loss to the Giants at Miller Park. It was his third home run in his last eight games after something of a power drought last month. He was certainly struggling big time when we were at Miller Park on the last road trip. He was just caught in between way out in front of off speed pitches way behind fastballs and he was wearing his emotions on his sleeve. You could tell he was frustrated when we faced him at Miller Park. Well he put on that tremendous show in April after playing the last several seasons in Korea. Still trying to get his legs back under him. He hit 345 in the first month of the season and belted a Brewers record 11 home runs, but it's been a bit of a drought ever since. Zoom ball there, the fastball got away from Delgado, and it's two and one. Thames, when he played three years in Korea, never saw a fastball. So he's learned plate discipline, he's learned how to lay off breaking balls. Right now he's fourth in the league in walks. And he's ahead three and one. Well, this Brewers team they do not allow you a lot of opportunity to settle in out there on the mound in the first inning this year they've scored 57 runs which is first in the majors they have a team batting average of 331 which is first in the majors and an OPS of 994 which is also first in the majors. Big cut at that Delgado slider. Good to see Randall come up with that one. Full count three and two. Yeah, all those numbers I just mentioned for the Brewers in the first inning have resulted in 57 first inning runs. They've only allowed 17 in the first inning. Great Councils Club, a good road team. They're 15 and 10 away from Miller Park this year. Here's the 3 2 to Thames. Brewers have lost only two road series all season. Nick Ahmed right behind the bag at second base. He's the shortstop. Owings the second baseman out in short right field. And there's another walk for Thames. Two on one out for Erdan Perez. Yeah, not the worst thing that could happen. You never really like to put guys on via the walk, but it does set up a potential double play to get out of this first inning unscathed. Perez 277 home runs. This guy's an aggressive hacker. He has not seen a whole lot of pitches lately. So he's up there looking to do damage. Santana at second, Thames at first, one out. Swings at the first pitch, gets that Delgado changeup, and it's 0 and 1. Hernan Perez in left field tonight. Brewers are still without Ryan Braun. He's on the DL with that left calf strain. An injury he aggravated against the Diamondbacks at Miller Park last month. A 
Headed toward the left field corner. <laughs> Foul. Back to back change ups to start the sequence to Perez. We mentioned, as you mentioned, very aggressive hacker, especially with runners in scoring position. You can get that change up down just a little bit more, either get that swing and a miss or the ground ball he's looking for. Well, this is where you're really got him where you want him because Perez as aggressive as he is gets even more aggressive with two strikes on him. He's not afraid to swing in two strike counts. Just like that a bouncer to third land a second for one and that's it. And they get the force on Thames Santana's at third. Two down, Pettis aboard, and the hitter will be the catcher, Manny Pena. Well, unfortunately, too soft of contact that time. Perez with that one handed swing, it's a little chopper to the third base side. And by the time Jake Lamb gets the ball to CO at second base, no time to turn that double play. Perez does run extremely well. And he's a real stolen base threat, Hernan Pettis. The catcher, Manny Pena, 289, two homers. He's hit safely in five of his last six games. Can't really bat when your fly is down. <laughs> That's embarrassing. I felt the draft. It's <laughs> well, distracting. The roof is open after all. <laughs> Swing and a miss at that Delgado fastball, and Randy's ahead 0 and 1. Pena got off to a great start this year. On May the 1st, he was hitting 385. Since then, however, he's hit only 210. Pretty big drop off. Perez breaks for second. Delgado bounces one. Mathis has no chance. Change up was spiked up there and give Perez credit for his third stolen base. Now with the runner on second, we got to restart everything. Diamondbacks aren't the only team that does this, and it still boggles my mind. I mean, that's one of the last things a catcher and pitcher usually talk about when they come in from the bullpen. What sign do you want to use with the runner at second base? But instead, we stop the game and have a team meeting on the mound to talk about that as the game is going on. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One -one. That's belted down the left field line. This will score two. Santana is home. Perez right behind Manny Pena, his 11th double, and it's 2 0 Milwaukee. Well, we've seen this movie before. The Padres took a 2 0 lead in the first inning of that ball game last night. Ultimately, the Diamondbacks won it 15 3. But this is exactly what we expected from the Brewers. Very aggressive offensively, especially early in the game. These guys can hit that's for sure they stayed out ahead of the field for the majority of the season in the National League Central. The slumping Jonathan VR in its second base he shoots one the other way Descalso won't get there it drops home Pena scores it's three nothing Brewers back to back RBI doubles. That's the ninth for VR. I don't know how pitchers feel about it, but these used to really make me mad. I mean, that's a good pitch off the outside corner of the plate with some tailing action, and VR just cues it off the very last inch of the bat and drops it into fair territory down the left field line for an RBI double. Mike Butcher out there. Oh, I actually do know how pitchers feel about it. <laughs> just same. like I do. Exactly. <laughs> Well, one advantage we thought maybe for Delgado tonight, the Brewers have yet to see him this season because he started that final home game before the last road trip. He didn't pitch in Milwaukee last month. In fact, no current Brewers were even with their organization the last time Delgado faced Milwaukee as a starter. That was four years ago. Here's the rookie just up for the minors. It's Brett Phillips. Just turned 23 years old about a week or so ago. Only three big league at bats ever. The starter tonight in center field. 
Phillips singled struck out twice in his major league debut. That was Monday in Milwaukee. Got his first big league hit against the Giants Jeff Samarja. The shift is on. Brett Phillips in center field tonight for the slumping Keon Broxton who's leading the National League in strikeouts. Travis Shaw is on the paternity list right now the Brewers third baseman so when he went on that list Phillips got the call up there's Keon Broxton. Two balls and one strike fastball missed that time. Phillips has been in triple A Colorado Springs all year. About 50 games down there. He hit 297 with 11 home runs. Lays off that fastball, and he's ahead now, three and one. And a shortstop, Orlando Arcia on deck. Ahmed knowing VR has excellent speed staying near that bag at second with the shift on. Fouls the fastball straight back and it's a full count three and two. Delgado trying to get out of this bumpy first. Three Brewer doubles in this inning and three runs. Got him. Changeup gets Delgado out of it, but Milwaukee gets three. D backs coming up. First inning doubles. They have the early 3 0 lead for their starter, your Ram truck starter, right hander Zach Davies, 24 year old, out of Mesquite High School in Gilbert. 6 and 3, a 4 6 9 ERA. Diamondbacks, however, beat Davies at Miller Park on the last road trip. Yeah, unfortunately for Zach Davies, he bumped up against Robbie Ray in that game. Robbie went seven innings, gave up only two hits to the Brewers, struck out nine in shutting him down. Davies gave up a leadoff home run to Blanco to start the ball game, a leadoff home run in the second to Chris Owings. Did you say a leadoff home run to Gregor Blanco? I did. Well, what a coincidence. <laughs> here he is to lead it off for the Diamondbacks down three zip here. It looked a little something like this. This was the very first at bat in an 11 game road trip and you couldn't have asked for a more impressive start. Pretty good start. Blanco 269 with that one homer. He singled and walked twice in the win over San Diego yesterday. Scored three times. A little floater in there, a loopy curveball gets a piece of it, and Sogard can't pick it up. 
Take a look at the lineup for Tori Lavello's Diamondbacks. It's brought to you by your Valley Chevy dealers. It wasn't a leadoff home run, but Greg Blanco on base to lead it off. He'll be out in center field. David Peralta in right field tonight. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. Jake Lamb over at third. Chris Owens moves into second base today. Daniel Descalso in left field. Nick Ahmed at shortstop. Jeff Mathis doing the catching for Randall Delgado. Well, an error goes up on the board there. E5 puts Blanco at first for David Peralta. That gets by Thames. They'll settle for the out at first as Davies gets over there. 4 1 on the put out. Blanco to second base. Let's take a look at the Brewers defensively. It's brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Across the outfield, Hernan Perez in left, Brett Phillips in center, Domingo Santana over in right field. It'll be Sogard at third, Arcia at short, VR at second base, Eric Thames over at first, and Pena doing the catching tonight for right hander Zach Davis. Paul Goldschmidt, 3 10, 13 home runs. Goldie had a pair of hits yesterday, including an RBI double. He also walked for the fourth game in a row. He's tied with Joey Votto for the major league lead in walks. Leads the majors in runs scored. Breaking balls in the dirt. It's 1 0 to Goldie. He's up there with Blanco at second and one down. Goldie also leads the majors with a 433 batting average with runners in scoring position. That's the defensive alignment against him. Three defenders on the left hand side of the infield. Thames all by himself over there on the right. Fastballs in there for a strike, and it's one and one. Yeah, we saw that error by Sogard down at third base for the Brewers to start the game on the Gregor Blanco ball. That's something the Brewers have had some issues with. They've made 44 errors this season. Only the Oakland A's have made more. Deepaks have done a great job this year taking advantage of opportunities like that, mistakes made by the other team. Zach Davies throws a lot of two seam fastballs. Whole bunch. He throws that pitch more than most guys. He'll throw it a lot on the first pitch of at bats when he's behind in the count. That two seam sinking fastball. That's his best pitch, his favorite pitch. Goldie ahead, two balls and one strike. He threw a good one there, and it's two and two. There's a lot of foot traffic that Goldie's looking at at second base. Blanco keeps taking a big secondary lead. VR is sneaking in there behind him from his second base spot. There's a, I would think, a lot of distraction back there for the hitter. It can be for some hitters more than others. Some guys don't want that base runner to move at second base when they're up there at the plate. Other guys uh, can maintain their focus on that release point and not be bothered by that movement. That one clipped Goldie. Yep. Trying to get that two seamer down and in. And he might have plunked him with that one. Ooh. That hurts. On the right kneecap. Well, a chance for Jake Lamb, two on and one out. Jake 281, 15 home runs. He is leading the major leagues with those 53 runs batted in. Everybody loves Lamb these days. Blanco at second and Goldie at first. Most remarkably, yesterday, the Diamondbacks scored 15 runs in beating San Diego, and Jake, with more RBIs than anyone in baseball, was 0 for 4, didn't drive it a single run. Good team player. Yeah, somebody's got to make the outs. Went back to that two seamer. He loves that pitch, but he just missed with it. It's 2 0. The Lambs are out in force. The roof is open here at Chase Field. A 
gorgeous Friday night in downtown Phoenix. Well, Lambs are very excited up there tonight. <laughs> they know that Jake since May 19th is 11 for 20 with runners in scoring position. High fly ball. Deep right center. Way back and gone. He did it again. Jake Lamb. That's number 16 and we're tied at three. Shake those lambs. Not bad. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it looked like a slider. No, oh, perhaps a changeup. Yeah, he kind of turned it over a little bit. It faded right back to the middle of the plate for Jake Lamb, and his teammates are digging it. 56 runs batted in for the major league leader. And a jumbo jack, a free jumbo jack tomorrow with the purchase of a large drink at Jack in the Box. Here's Chris Owings. Much like Patrick Corbin yesterday gets a new life here. Randall Delgado will take the mound at least even. A bouncer to shortstop, Orlando Arcia, two down. We'll start over again. Instead of 0 0, it's 3 3 for Randall. Courtesy of Jake Lamb's 16th home run this year. I mentioned that comeback in the game yesterday against the San Diego Padres, the 21st comeback win of the season for the Diamondbacks, most in the National League. Well, we're on our way to another one. Here's Descalso in left field again tonight, 228, five homers. Brewers have three defenders on the right side of the infield. VR the second baseman backs up in the outfield grass. RC the shortstop on the first base side of second. Descalso ahead two balls and no strikes. Daniels hit safely in seven of his last eight starts. Slices one toward left. Aaron Perez drifting over toward left center field and he's got it. Diamondbacks were down three nothing Jake Lamb the major league RBI leader gets all three back his 16th of the year has tied it up. Head to the second with Randall Delgado on the mound making his fourth start of the season but this is his first start knowing that he has solidified a spot in this rotation for now. Torrey said it was important for the young righty to know that this team believes in him because he wants him to know that if there are a few bumps in the road like we saw in that first inning he doesn't have to worry there's no looking over his shoulder. This coaching staff trusts him and they want him to go out there and deliver and they hope that trust will build to his confidence on the mound guys we'll see if it works. Okay he's been a big part of this team there's no question about that just gets better and better here.
Orlando Arcia, the shortstop, leads it off. A hard hop to CO tries to recover and throws it away. Arcia gets up that line pretty well. And they'll score that a single for the Brewers shortstop. Getting to know Arp. Sponsored by AARP. A look at Randall Delgado, the starting pitcher. And the numbers so far have been pretty good. Yeah, really good. And uh, has started to incorporate that slider a little bit more as a starting pitcher than he did out of the bullpen. You may recall earlier this season, he was basically a two pitch guy out of the pen, fastball changeup, but he's mixed in a few sliders, feels it's uh, become a bigger part of his arsenal as a starting pitcher. Well, here's the Brewers starting pitcher, Zach Davies, see if he can get a bunt down once at first base side, but foul. Saw that shot of Tori Lovello from across the field. All the heat between the camera and the dugout. It's still a little warm here. Just over 100 degree degrees at first pitch, but uh, it should cool off with the roof open. Yeah, the roof shut most of the afternoon. That AC cranked up. A little more clear now. Jake Land halfway in at third. They'll keep Arcia close at first. Gets it down. Delgado's got one play. Owings is over there. One four on the sacrifice. Moves Arcia along. That'll bring up the leadoff man, Eric Sogard. So you've got Zach Davies from Mesquite High in Gilbert, who just made the out. And here's Sogard, who went to Thunderbird High School and it played at ASU. Kind of a homecoming of sorts with these Brewers. Sogard popped up to open up the ball game. He's 0 for 1. You mentioned that nerd power. That's his term, not mine. Wears those horn rim glasses. Kind of an unusual look for a major league ball player. Most guys wear some kind of goggles or something that they need to wear eyeglasses on the field, but. Sogard looks like he just walked out of the library. Don't make fun of guys wearing glasses. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> one and one. Well, he has really been a force in this lineup ever since he got the call up from AAA. Was not able to play in the major leagues last year. Eric Sogard had a serious knee injury. He's picked up a lot of the slack at second base for the slumping Jonathan VR, but uh, Sogar today in at third with Travis Shaw on paternity leave. Tony Perez Chica sort of has a similar eye wear. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sogar's done a nice job plugging that leadoff hole for the Brewers. Before tonight, he had had 10 plate appearances as a leadoff hitter of the game and had reached base eight times. Wow. Five hits and three walks. Looks at a fastball for strike three. Second strikeout for Delgado. Two down. Right fielder, Domingo. Not much you can do with that anyway. You take it and hope the umpire doesn't call it a strike. 95 at the knees on the outside corner. Well, the way he's going in this ballpark, Domingo Santana could be in for a big weekend. Diamondbacks need to figure something out against this guy. He is just red hot right now. Doubled and scored his first time up. Santana now with a nine game hitting streak. Three home runs over that streak. He's had two hits in each of his last three games. And he's already one for one tonight. That's out of play. Good fastball from Delgado. He's ahead now 0 and 2. Want to keep the ball down against Domingo Santana. He has been crushing fastballs up in the zone this year at nearly twice the league average. He can handle a fastball away pretty well, too. There's one down and away, a breaking ball that time, and it's one and two. Santana, since May the 1st, is sitting over 330. And he's done a good job hitting the ball to all fields. He'll go to center and to right as often as he pulls the ball.
Fits on that slider and he's even two balls and two strikes. This in Milwaukee. Santana always looks like he's about to take a cat nap up there at the plate. He's just so relaxed. Yeah, no tension in his facial muscles whatsoever. Almost looks like he could nod off in the batter's box. Very relaxed. Ooh, looks at a change up and it's full three and two. Well, that's a good thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Eliminate tension. Eric Thames give you some tension on deck. <laughs> oh, a quick mound visit here from Mike Butcher. You know, Randall spiked a few change ups so far tonight. That pitch hasn't been quite as sharp as we normally see at least not yet. Trying to strand Arcia at second base with two outs. Brewers got three in the top of the first. Two run double by Manny Pena. RBI double by Jonathan VR. Diamondbacks answered in the home half. A Jake Lamb three run home run. Three and two on Domingo Santana. Here it is. Missed inside with a fastball. No appeal to first. Second walk issued by Delgado. It appeared to be just off that inside corner at 95. I'm sure part of that conversation with Mike Butcher and Randall Delgado was uh, about the fact that there is a base open over there. How do you want to go about throwing this 3 2 pitch? We don't want to toss a cookie up there to one of their hottest hitters. They decided to try to jam him inside with a fastball and just missed off the corner. This is how they'll line up against Eric Thames, who walked his first time up. First pitch swinging. Yeah, the, right now, the way Santana's swinging the bat, Bob, it, it seems like Thames is the guy to go after, even though he's got the big numbers. And he's got the platoon advantage, lefty on righty. But uh, yeah, I think sometimes uh, you look at the season numbers and they might tell you one story, but then you look at the recent numbers, who's hot right now? And there's no question Santana is the guy you want to try to avoid with runners in scoring position. Yeah, Eric Thames in 30 games since the end of April is hitting only 202. A couple of times Randall has thrown a zoom ball for a fastball. Some of those have gotten away from him a bit. Here's the one one. Another change up in the dirt two balls in one strike. Well, one of the reasons Tori Lovello likes Randall Delgado in the rotation he's proven that he could repeat his delivery over and over and over again. It looks like Randall is struggling just a little bit out there right now to find a good release point especially for that straight changeup. It doesn't look as smooth as we've normally seen him lately. 40 pitches only 24 for strikes. Oh, bouncer to first for Goldie. And a good job by Delgado. He strands two. He keeps it a 3 3 ball game.
Chase Field. Brewers D backs tied at three. D backs fans, stop by your local Fry. Stock up on your favorite Pepsi products using your VIP card. You'll earn valuable D backs rewards points that you can redeem for merchandise and for game experiences. Pepsi, the official soft drink of your Arizona Diamondbacks. Here's a look outside Chase Field on a Friday night in downtown Phoenix. Glad you're with us here on Fox Sports Arizona. Nick Ahmed leads off the second against Zach Davies. Nick 277 and five homers. And a pair of hits and a start at shortstop yesterday in the big wipeout win of San Diego. This has become the season of Nick Ahmed the hitter. Yeah. In his 32 starts this year, Nick has hit 282 with five home runs. Yeah, 277 overall. Yeah, we mentioned it the other day, you know, for the last few years we've been saying, boy, if Nick could just hit 250 or 260, you'd really love him out there at shortstop, and he's turning himself into a hitter. That gives you the occasional home run, too. He's really hit lefties well this year. Shoots that one the other way. Thames a nice spinning backhand stop and Davies, Davies gets over there for the first out. Nicely done by Eric Thames at first. Now ranging far off that bag makes a nice backhanded stop quickly gets to his feet runs toward his target. Always give a much more accurate flip if you're running toward your target and that time hit Davies right in stride. Moved pretty well for a guy who had dead legs a couple of weeks yeah. ago. The catcher Jeff Mathis he's in a one for 19 skid right now a buck 58 with two homers. Zach Davies part of a Milwaukee rotation that has really done well lately. It's a big reason why they're leading the National League Central ahead of the Cubs and everyone else. Last 14 games, Brewers starting pitchers are 7 and 1 with a 171 ERA. That kind of pitching above their station. It's Mathis swinging at a curveball, and that's uh, the first strikeout for Davies. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Well, we'll see if Randy is handy with the bat in his hands. Base is empty, two down for the D backs pitcher. Now, fans, we told you at the start of the broadcast that we've got. Some dynamite material with the uh, Tori Lavello wearing a microphone for us during batting practice today. And uh, once the last out is made in this half inning, don't touch that dial, as they used to say, because we'll uh, keep it right here and show you some of that. The D back skipper wearing a microphone. Don't touch that dial. Don't pick up that remote. That's right. LeBron will be fine. He's not going anywhere. You want to see this stuff, it's fun. And Delgado strikes out to end the inning the second strikeout for Zach Davies. Well this was earlier this afternoon here at Chase Field D back skipper Tori Lovello mic'd up for Fox Sports Arizona. Go get some compelling content. What color is your passport. OK is it America blue or is it Dominican blue. Now it's Dominican blue. Hey let's bring them off. We're gonna, yeah. Dominican is blue. Welcome to America. The land of the free. Yep. It's a great word right there, isn't it? So totally groovy. Nice the... Speaking of groovy, let me see your hair. Because you had some dirty hair in some of those oh, pictures, yeah. right? I mean, it was like the, the, the blonde mop over. Bro, like, I, mean, I mean, it was dirty. <laughs> huh? No, it was. Oh, my God. It was fantastic. And you were rocking the series blue jeans, too, bro. Sometimes when the players ask me questions, like I think, and I, I'm asking you this, like they're they're asking me questions like subliminally. So he asked me like about a dress up, like a relaxed dress up. Remember how he said that? He's like, I'm, maybe we can be a little bit more relaxed on this plane. Do you know what he was actually asking for? Because I don't know how much more relaxed we can get on our plane, right? <laughs> <Do I? laughs> like, am I okay to say this? Am I stepping out of line? No, no, I you think know, you're like... good. I think you're good. We, we've established that rapport, and I trust. Yeah, no, that's I trust what I said. it. That's okay, good. I just, in my opinion, it's like, all right, it's an off day. We're on the plane for six or three and a half hours. Like, 
I personally, I know other guys don't want to be in dress shoes and a button up, but I do know we're getting in at a decent time. Yeah. So I don't know what the protocol is. I got gotcha. you. I'm with you. The speedos. Just, yeah. No one can shave their chest. It's all, it's all got to come out. Talking me out. <laughs> do you have a hairy chest? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm not the only one in my family that has hair on his chest. You got a beautiful head of hair. The beard. I mean, look, look at me. You're lucky. <laughs> Uh, you know, some of that and most of it there was in fun. But I, Bob, that's a great example of why he has been so successful here. That one-on-one -on -one rapport he has with his players. Yeah, and then that interchange with Archie Bradley. They were talking about the dress code on the airplane. We fly to Detroit on an off day this time, but we do get into Detroit at a reasonable hour. And you know, you don't want to go walking through the hotel lobby in a speedo like Tom Williamson suggested. Thankfully, but, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, uh, the door is open. Conversations go both ways. Is that hard for some managers? What was it like for you? Well, you had a very veteran team. Yeah. It's a different group here. I played with and against some of those guys, so yeah, it was it was relatively easy. Although you know, it probably wasn't the same kind of manager-player relationship that some guys have because uh, you know we were so close in age. A lot of those guys were almost as old as I was. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron and Perez leads off the third against Randall Delgado. Well, that was the reputation that Tory had when he came in here. It's one of the reasons why he was top of the list for Mike Hazen in the new front office in terms of managerial candidates is that he'd been a bench coach in Boston. He'd been in Toronto. He, he, he was just a player's guy and he felt good about him. Well, sometimes that has positive and negative connotations when you say, oh, that guy's a player's manager. What does that mean to you? Well, uh, my knee-jerk reaction is he's too soft on his guys. They, you know that—that's the conventional wisdom. If he's a player's manager, that means he lets them pretty much do whatever they want, and I don't think that's necessarily the case with Tori. Lamb in front of Ahmed, nicely done by Jake Lamb. They retire Perez. I think for me, more than anything else, being a quote-unquote players manager means you understand what the players are going through because you've experienced it yourself. Tory's been a starting player, he's been a bench player, he's been a bench coach, he's been a manager at the minor league level. He's seen this game from so many different angles. He recognizes how hard it is to be a bench player in the big leagues, how tough it is to come in and get three or four at bats as a pinch hitter in a week. That's not an easy way to make a living, but Tory's been there and he knows what it's like. Manny Pena, Brewers catcher, had a two run double in the first. Tori, when he got the job, said, You know, it's kind of like starting your own business. It's a lot of things that you're trying to put together, a lot of visions. It's a common vision with Mike Hazen and the team ownership here. But there's the overall excitement that kind of goes hand in hand when you start a new business, a new enterprise, and just to sort of get a look and, and see how it runs. See if it, it meets your vision of what you had hopes for. And that's certainly been the case, I'm guessing, here through the first two months of the oh, season. Yeah. And I'm sure if you ask Tori, he would give a lot of credit to his coaching staff. And once again, like any good business, you hire the best people you can find to maybe fill in some of your weaknesses or some of the things that you feel you need help with. Uh, get good people to do their job and then let them do it. Got great coaches here, Mike Butcher, Dave McKay, Dave Baggett brought in Ron Gardenhier to be the bench coach. Pena skies this one up. Still a light sky for Peralta out in right field. That's why I'm always a little hesitant when a team hires a new manager and he's basically forced to work with the same coaching staff that was there before the previous manager. Right, you don't get to pick your coaches. Yeah, and now, now believe me, I understand a lot of times the holdover guys are very good. I kept Glenn Sherlock and Dwayne Murphy and Chris Spire. There were guys that I kept around. But you want to bring some people in that you trust and you know they have your back. You know they understand how you think the game should be played and they're right there with you. Well, it's interesting that Tori, I think, already had that relationship with the front office because mm -hmm. they, in a sense, were a collective for the most part, coming uh, from Boston. Jared Porter had been in Chicago, but only for one year. Prior to that, he was with the Red Sox and Mike Hazen and Ami Ellen, the whole group. Jonathan VR an RBI double his first time up.
And it's been great to have Guardy with us too. I mean, he was in the trenches, man, for years in the yeah. Metrodome with some of those really good Twins teams. And you've got a rookie skipper. Got to imagine it helps to have a veteran guy right next to him who's been down the road a million times. Not only good Twins teams for Ron Gardenhire, but some bad ones too. And I think that's a yeah, valuable learning experience at the major league level. Learn how to lose and how to try to avoid losing in the future. Great counsel. A lot of people surprised that he's got this club leading the division, especially ahead of the Cubs. Game and a half ahead of Chicago. Cubs were beaten again today by the Rockies. But Milwaukee's done very well, 32 and 29. Three games over 500. One and two on the Brewers' second baseman. Well, in Craig Council's case, that one almost hit Euchre. Uh oh. Yep, look out, Euchre. Don't hit Euchre. Don't hit the, the franchise. <laughs> oh, he's killing Jeff Levering now for not getting in front of him. <laughs> Got to protect the Hall of Famer over there, Jeff. Come on. There's Euchre on the left. It just missed him. And Delgado strikes out Jonathan VR. A one, two, three, third. We're tied at three at Chase Field. Birthday is coming up Sunday, fans. June 11th. He's inviting you and all of his mascot buddies to join him here at Chase Field. There is harassing Brett Phillips before the game. First 10,000 kids on Sunday get a bat and ball set as part of MLB's Play Ball Weekend. We'll have some face painting and pinatas and laterazza for the kids. That's uh, in the right field upper concourse section. And also after the game, kids can run the bases for Phoenix Children's Hospital. See all our kid-friendly activities at Chase Field online, dbacks.com. Slash kids gonna have to get to Baxter something for his birthday on Sunday. Mm. Gregor Blanco reached on an error to lead off the ball game for the Diamondbacks. Scored on Jake Lamb's three-run homer. Where do you get the furry creature that already has everything? Uh, stuff that will bother other players, I think. Okay. Baxter likes to go over there and do rock paper mm -hmm. scissors, and he, you know, we just saw him messing around with Brett Phillips before the game today. He needs he need some props. Yeah, the joy buzzer. Yeah, some of that shake stuff. hands with the visiting team. Itching powder. Yeah, you know. Tom Candiotti has a lot of that kind of stuff in his uh, briefcase over there next yes, door. Yes, he does. It's a good point. Don't ever ride an elevator with Tom Candiotti. Did you have a bad experience? Ooh. What happened? Well. well a very crowded elevator. You know how it is when yeah. we check into hotels. You got two bus loads of guys piled into the elevator lobby. Everybody wants to get up to their room right away. And Candiotti will sneak on the back of the elevator, and all of a sudden you will smell an aroma 
that you normally don't smell on an elevator. And there's nowhere to go. Yeah, and there you're trapped. Our State Farm winning combo. The leadoff walk to Blanco. David Peralta, the hitter now. Diamondback number two hitters. Oh, Bob, this is what you were talking about, hitting ahead of Goldie. Yeah, I really think it's one of the most comfortable spots in any batting order in baseball. Peralta grounded out his first time up. Yeah, especially when that leadoff man gets on, Gregor Blanco tonight, A.J. Pollock in the past, occasionally Chris Owings, whoever plugged into that leadoff spot, if they get on base, it really enhances the number two hitter's chances of getting good pitches to hit. Well, it sure did wonders for Chris Iannetta yesterday. Yeah. A career high seven runs batted in. And David was a part of that game, even though he didn't get to start yesterday. Peralta came up with a big pinch hit, two run single against mm -hmm. the Padres. Gregor Blanco, four for four in his stolen base attempts this year. You know, partner, I'm beginning to sense a trend here recently for the Diamondbacks offensively. Scoring a lot of runs? Well, that too. <laughs> Against the Padres, they scored 32 runs on only 29 base hits. Yeah. Tonight, they've got three runs on one hit. <laughs> Maximize those base runners. Well, they had, we talked about also taking advantage of other teams' mistakes. That's how they got those three runs. I mean, Blanco reached on the error by Sogard at third. They hit Goldie with a pitch when Davies trying to come down and in with a fastball. And sure enough, next batter land three run homer. That's a great thing. Teams are going to know when you come in here, first of all, Diamondbacks are going to hit. Second of all, you cannot make mistakes against them and give them opportunities to hit. And I would think that's going to make the other teams play a little tight. Afraid to make that mistake. We certainly hope so. Yeah. And another trend that's turned in a positive direction through the first 17 games this season the Diamondbacks scored one first inning run in 17 games. Really. Wow. In their last 46 games they've scored 42 runs in the first inning. That one gets through Peralta rolls one into left center. A walk and a single open up the Diamondback third. That's just nice hitting right there. It's a good tailing fastball from Davies working his way out there to the outside corner at the knees. And like we've seen David do so many times this year, just stayed on it, slapped it to the opposite field. Yeah, there's that two seam fastball that would tail away from the left hand hitter. Only a little discussion with Nick Lentz back there. Hit by a pitch right on the knee his first time, huh? Nobody out. 3 3 ball game. Blanco at second and Peralta. Is it first? Think he's a fan favorite or what? <laughs> he might hit it out there to him. This is Goldie's spot, as we mentioned in his first at bat, leading the major leagues, a 433 hitter with runners in scoring position. Fastball missed, it's 2 0. Oh. I mentioned, I think the number two spot in the D backs order is one of the most comfortable spots in any lineup. A close second would probably be Jake Lamb hitting after Goldie because you're usually going to have somebody on base. Oh, you're right about that. Especially here at Chase Field. Goldie, when he's at Chase Field this season, gets on base every other at bat. Close play there at second. Craig Council wants a look. Goldie's on base percentage at home this year is exactly 500. And that's a big reason why he scored more runs than any other player in baseball. Clock is ticking on Craig Council here. It's at zero now, in fact. Time's up. Okay, no challenge. 
We play on two balls and no strikes. Blanco at second, Peralta at first. There's a strike, two and one. Zach Davies so far has only walked one batter. That was Blanco to lead off this inning, but through 39 pitches, he's thrown more balls than strikes. Two one is popped up. First base side, Thames is under it. Infield fly roll is called. First out. Oh, you think Jake Lamb is all-star worthy? Our Cox high-speed highlights leading the major leagues with 56 runs batted in. His three-run homer in the first is 16th of the year. Well, I'll tell you, Jake hasn't hit many cheapies lately either. They're, they're all up on the concourse or over the pool or in the back of the right field bleachers. Yeah, when he hits them, man, they go. Talking about all star worthy, Tori Lavella was saying, you know, Jake is driving in big runs, hoping the league takes notice. He gets that recognition and a chance to be an all star because he certainly deserves to be. But that's a popularity contest more than anything else these days. That's why we got to vote. That's right. D backs fans, get out and vote. Now, this is the kind of situation where the Diamondbacks can really make a pitcher out there sweat. This is a team that runs the double steal all the time. You've got good speed out there. Blanco at second, Peralta at first, and a good hitter at the plate. Here they go. Roll to first. Thames will get Lamb, and a runner's advance. Be a little overly aggressive that time by Jake Lamb. Certainly he can see the runners going, but saw that breaking ball up and out over the plate, rolled it over to the right side of the infield. It does move both runners up 90 feet, but if you think those runners have a good enough jump to steal that base, go ahead and take the pitch. I'd rather hit with runners at second and third than first and second. Second and third, two down now for Chris Owings, who grounded out, calling himself the little freight train these days. <laughs> Change his walk up music back away from the train song that he joked around about yesterday with David Peralta. Chris Homer off Zach Davies in his first at bat against him in the last road trip at uh, Miller Park. Let off the second inning of that ball game with a home run after Blanco would hit the lead off Homer to start the game. This was Chris Owings to lead off the second inning of the first game of the last road trip off Zach Davies the other way. Opposite field blast into the Diamondbacks bullpen out there in right center field. CEO now with seven home runs already a new career high. Bounced up the middle RC gets to just about everything over there. And Davies able to strand two. We are through three. It's 3-3. Three, three.
What does the duck say to the bartender? Whack. Put it on my bill. <laughs> That'd be pretty good. I like that one. <laughs> so do you. Get that! Get that! That is the best oh, laugh on man. planet Earth. The rookie center fielder Brett Phillips, whose teammates, and you can oh, see why, are brother. constantly trying to get him to laugh because he just locks up. He can't stop. <laughs> he leads off the fourth against Randall Delgado. It's like he, he just can't breathe and he can't make himself not laugh, and he is constantly oh, hearing jokes man. all the time. Here's how the lineup against him defensively. One eye open, one eye closed. Oh man. There, and there's a long period where you can tell that no air is getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> that he has become a YouTube sensation. If you just type in YouTube Brett Phillips laugh and you'll watch it for hours, it's priceless. Delgado behind three and one. Phillips struck out to win the first his first time up just called up to the big leagues for the first time this week. Orlando RC on deck. Now when you're a rookie and you've played let's see what three big league at bats ever. You can't joke around right isn't there you have to be well, serious you laugh at all the veterans jokes I think, you know. That's a prerequisite for a rookie. You laugh at everything the veterans tell you. Well, especially him, because, you know, they're going to expect a performance when he shows up at the clubhouse. Well, like everything else in this game, there's a time and a place. I mean, his teammates aren't going to run out to him in center field and try to get him to laugh in the middle of an <laughs> inning, but. You know, there's a lot of downtime on the buses and the planes and in the clubhouse. And when you've got some easy mark like this, it's, <laughs> it's fun. It is candy from a baby. <laughs> Phillips is, is a baby, just turned 23 about a week or so ago. Fights off another 3 2 from Delgado. Phillips was leading all Brewers minor leaguers in home runs when he got called up playing at. Colorado Springs in the Coast League 297 with 11 homers. Jeff Mathis behind the plate one more pitch on three and two. All strike three looks at a fastball four strikeouts for Randall. Shortstop right there 95 Randall throwing hard tonight consistently dotting that outside corner on these Brewers left handed hitters with that big fastball. Well, Delgado's now set down five in a row. Here's Orlando Arcia who singled his first time up. Orlando Arcia the younger brother of Diamondbacks outfielder Osvaldo Arcia who's having a very good year with Triple A Reno right now. Orlando's another young guy the Brewers have he's only 22 years old. And Friday night at Chase Field with the roof open here. A rare treat for us on June the 9th. Popped it up and that's behind the screen. We're not usually able to have the roof open. It's supposed to be up. We're hoping be open tonight and tomorrow as well. The latest the roof has ever been open at Chase Field was 2004. It was open on July the 3rd for a game. The highest outside temperature with a roof open ever was in 2011, 106. A slow bouncer, tough play for Ahmed. Throw pulls Goldie off the bag, and RC is aboard. But that's what, in a lot of ways, makes Nick Ahmed so good is that quick release. He gets rid of the ball so quickly. It's barely in his glove for a second. I mean, in and out so fast. Unfortunately, the throw pulls Goldie off the bag over there that time. But that, that, that 
Yeah, among did. other things, is what set Nick apart from other shortstops. Just that ability to get rid of the ball so quickly and get something on the throw. Infield single for Arcia. He's two for two. Fifth hit for the Brewers. And Zach Davies, who bunted him over the last time up, will try and do that again. Pops it up. What are you always saying about the the angle of the bat to avoid doing that? Uh, it's just human nature for most pitchers. When they get the bat out there, they usually start with it level at the top of the zone. That's what you're taught. But then they drop the right hand down, and it drops the angle of the barrel. And you see a lot of foul balls go straight back when uh, when pitchers that bunt or position players that bunt drop that barrel of the bat. Chops out at that time. Delgado picks it up. Owings gets over to cover. Another 1 4 on the sacrifice. And RC is at second with two outs. Hey, fans, the day after every D backs win, get 50% off all pizzas at regular menu price using promo code DBACKS50 at PapaJohns.com. Eric Sogard 0 for 2. Sogard homered yesterday in Milwaukee's loss to the Giants at Miller Park. He had three hits in that game. He's got eight hits in his last four games, but 0 for 2 so far tonight. Brewers arrive in Phoenix having just split a four game series with the Giants at Miller Park. They open up a seven game road trip here this weekend three at Chase Field, then four in St. Louis. When did you say the last date for the or the latest date for the roof being open? Oh. <laughs> I it, this is why your staff is so unreliable. <laughs> I said the according to your uh, increasingly unreliable staff the latest the roof has ever been open here it, in any date any year was July 3rd 2004 which uh, is now being pointed out to me was the day after you were dismissed as manager of the Diamondbacks. <laughs> I took the key to the roof with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. Leave it open. <laughs> Just turn off the lights. That's funny. Yeah, I was actually on my way to San Diego, I believe. Yeah, I got got fired on the second. Went home, got a toothbrush and a clean pair of underwear, and jumped in the car to drive to San Diego, where my son Michael was playing in a in a youth ball tournament over there for the weekend. That was a long trip. <laughs> Well, it was a lovely evening that night. It sure was, open. yeah. Two and one to Sogard. That's a number that stays fair. Lamb bears it. What a great play by Jake Lamb. That gets Delgado out of the fourth. Well, he is an all star, ladies and gentlemen. A three run homer in the first, and that all star worthy play in the fourth.
Vote all the time, vote Diamondbacks for your 2017 All-Stars with the eSurance MLB All-Star Game Ballots. Ever feel like you're being followed? Vote at dbacks.com slash vote. Catch all the excitement of the 88th MLB All-Star Game. It's presented by MasterCard, July 11th, live on Fox. Brewers have the shift on for Daniel Descalso, who flying out to left field to win the first. VR second baseman on the outfield grass. RC the shortstop in the middle there. Descalso has been a weapon here at home. All five of his home runs, nearly all of his RBIs have come here at Chase Field. Had a couple of RBI hits, including a home run yesterday. Had a two run single in Tuesday's series opener against San Diego. Again, filling in in left field for the injured Yasmani Tomas. Skies one shallow center. Phillips running in. Falls off Arcee at the last moment and collects that one to lead off the bottom of the fourth. Nick Ahmed. Brewers three runs on five hits. Diamondbacks three runs on just two hits. Jake Lamb's three run home run in the first. All the offense so far. 16th of the year for Jake. First pitch swinging. Ahmed right to VR at second. Two down. The catcher Jeff Mathis. Jack Davies now right at 50 pitches, only 26 for strikes. Davies has a way of keeping his team in the ball game. He's lost only once in his last 10 starts. And that was his start against the Diamondbacks at Miller Park back on May 25th. And he is coming off an outstanding performance. His last time out, that was Sunday in Milwaukee against the Dodgers. Davies gave up only three hits, worked six scoreless, had six strikeouts against LA. Out of Mesquite High School in Gilbert, he was a 26th round draft pick by Baltimore back in 2011. Milwaukee picked him up at the trade deadline a couple of years ago in a trade for Gerardo Parra. Just 24 years old, Zach Davies. Six foot 155. He's a little guy out there. But he really works that two seam fastball well. Two and two now on Mathis. Manny Pena behind the plate for Milwaukee. Backdoor sinker. Right back to the glove. Zach Davies has now retired six in a row. We're tied at three at Chase Field.
in Pittsburgh, and look at this. The top of the batter's eye. He almost hit it to the bridge. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 449 feet, literally off the top of the hitting background in center field at PNC Park in Pittsburgh. Time for the unlimited baseball break. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. The Rays lost their gold glove center fielder, Kevin Kiermeyer for two months with a right hip injury. The Rockies won again. They beat the Cubs. They've won six in a row. And Justin Turner back off the DL for the Dodgers. He's in the lineup tonight against the Reds, batting third. Batting second for the Brewers is Domingo Santana. He has doubled and walked. He leads off the fifth against Randall Delgado. First pitch swinging is up the middle. Ahmed has it. How about this, partner? Since the 2010 season, Giancarlo Stanton has 26 home runs of 460 feet or more. <laughs> no other team has more than 15 total. <laughs> oh my. Well, he's making $325 million. Ooh. Getting paid by the yard. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Eric Thames. Now, I, I don't think he can. There's a big opt out in the middle of that contract, by the way. So they're not stuck with the entire deal. Although, why you would opt out of a $325 million yeah. contract is beyond me. Point being, there's been a lot of discussion lately that maybe the Marlins are getting set to blow that thing up, as they do from time to time. And, you know, teams might call about the Marcelo Zuna or a Christian Yelich or somebody like that. Because the team, uh, we were just there, and the team ownership is in flux right now. There may be a sale, there may not be. But Miami at the trade deadline, the phone will be ringing. Fame sports one out to center. Blanco's there. Randall Delgado. Since that first inning when Milwaukee got three has given up only two hits both singles by Orlando Arcia so he has done a superb job of putting a very shaky first inning behind him in that first he gave up three doubles and a base on balls but he has been very good ever since and Here's, both those hits excuse me partner yeah. the, uh, by Arcia were infield hits yeah he really stopped good. one up the middle and Nick did the same thing on the left side of the infield so. Yeah, he's really settled in after that shaky start. Just two infield singles and a uh, walk to Santana back in the second. Perez 0 for 2. He has stolen a base and scored a run. You don't want to get behind on Perez. Like most guys, he does a lot of damage when he's ahead in the count. Right now it's two and one. His OPS when the count is in his favor is top ten in all of baseball. Does a lot of damage when he's up like that. Now it's even two and two. Fouls off a piece of that slider. I think you watch so much baseball over the course of the year. You forget how important every pitch in that count really is. It oh, changes. Yeah. The equation changes with every pitch. And Greg Maddox, who has forgotten more about pitching than most of us will ever know, says that 1 1 pitch is the biggest swing pitch in baseball. Oh, well, Aaron Perez takes a big swing, and that ball is going to go. That's his eighth, and it's 4 3 Brewers. Well, there's a reason Aaron Perez is batting cleanup in a Milwaukee lineup that's hit a whole lot lately. The Craig Council told us in Milwaukee on that last uh, couple road trips ago, or last road trip, I guess it was, he really likes Aaron Perez. He thinks this guy is a perfectly suited National League player. He's a threat to go deep at any time. He can steal a base. He plays multiple positions. Really developing into a team leader over in that first base dugout. Manny Pena, the catcher, a two run double in that three run Milwaukee first. Just the sixth home run given up this year by Randall Delgado. Yeah, Perez is really a sneaky good player. Yeah. He started games at six different positions this year. He's filling in in left field while Ryan Braun is on the DL. 
But he can play shortstop, second, third, outfield, you name it. He can run, he's got power. Right, and Craig Council, he's got a manager that understands uh, the value of being a utility player, playing all those positions. I don't know what we'd have done without Craig Council back in 01. Nina hits one pretty deep right field. Peralta on the track. He's going to have to play it off the wall. It gets stuck under there. And Pena has got his second double tonight. We didn't see a lot of Manny Pena in that series in Milwaukee. He got thumped in the elbow with a pitch and missed the rest of the series. But this guy's got big time power to any part of the ballpark as he just exhibited right there. Mike Butcher out to the mound. Randall Delgado, as we just had been saying, it settled in nicely. But now suddenly with two outs, a home run and a double. No one throwing the D back bullpen as you get. Randall just threw his natural progression over his three starts has stretched out his arm just about to where it should be as a starter. He had already given Tori Lovello four separate relief appearances of three innings each before he was picked up for that spot start when Taiwan Walker got the blister. So he's been at 92 and 93 pitches in his last two starts. Jonathan DR he's creeping up on that number right here. The R had an RBI double in the first. He's one for two. Keep showing Bun. Now he's down 0 and 2. All right. If he's thinking about Bun the ball to the third base side, those were two good pitches to attempt it on. Fastballs out near the outside corner of the plate, almost guaranteeing you're going to bunt them off the end of the bat and deaden it to that third base side, but took both of them for called strikes. Yeah, VR is a guy who does try and drop one down for base hits from time to time. Looks at a change up and it's one and two. VR is just about baseball's worst road hitter this year. His batting average away from Miller Park is 144. And he's had only 14 hits on the road all season. So no wonder he's trying to bunt for a base hit. Fastball up and it's two and two. And he's had a tough year anyway, hitting only 209 coming into the game. But when he gets away from Milwaukee, the batting average drops by more than 100 points. Delgado right at 90 pitches, 57 for strikes. VR fouls the 2-2 back. Well, VR is a guy who had a breakout season last year with Milwaukee after coming over from the Houston Astros. Led the major leagues in stolen bases, I and mean, he was a real spark plug. But this year, just he's kind of a failure to launch. Called strike three. There's that Delgado slider. Five strikeouts for Randall, but the Brewers take a 4 3 lead.
the fifth inning. D-backs fans, if you can't catch the games on your TV, well, don't worry. Stream them live on your mobile device. Use Fox Sports Go. It's presented by your Valley Honda dealers. Download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona and your Diamondbacks with you wherever you go. Well, and Randall Delgado's night is over. Jeremy Hazelbaker will hit for Delgado to lead off the fifth. And they're not all going to be Hall of Fame worthy, but Randall certainly uh, did a good job bouncing back from that dicey first inning. Yeah, it really did. I mean, I, I've been down in that manager's seat, and when your starter has a shaky first and cannot right the ship, and you have to get into that bullpen in the first or second inning, that can ruin an entire homestand, certainly an entire series. And Randall gave him just about what he's been giving them in terms of the pitch count, certainly. Just a smidge over 90. That's the way it's been going lately. Hazel Baker right at 300 with a home run. And an RBI double in his only at bat yesterday. Yeah, cut at that very slow changeup. TJ McFarland, the left hander. Now he's the guy that's been able to give Torrey some length in that bullpen. Jeremy this year three for eight as a pinch hitter a double a couple of RBIs. Zach Davies has retired the last six Diamondbacks he's faced now he's got a 4 3 lead. Slice foul and it's two and two. Tori Lovello as Kate told us earlier they're. They're going to stick with Randall Delgado. He's going to continue to get the ball every fifth day. He's been able to get big outs. He's had big moments, not getting glassy eyed out there. He stays on the attack just like he did tonight, even while he fell behind early. And Hazelbaker looks at that two seam fastball. Seven straight retired by Davies. Hey fans, we invite you to participate in Gila River Game Nights by signing up at one of the interactive kiosks located at Chase Field during any D backs home game. Oh man, we were doing this last night at Tom Candiotti's house. Candy's got a batting cage set up, so uh, after the day game yesterday, a bunch of us went over to Candy's. Uh, it was me and uh, the moral compass, Mike Farron. The governor was there with Nancy. My wife Cindy was there. Candy uh, had a big cookout. And of course, after a few uh, refreshments, we got in the cage and Candy was throwing knuckleballs to everybody. And man, I think I broke my hammy bone. <laughs> There's the great Sean Payton coaching him up. See when you when you get in the cages here at Chase Field, you know you let the kids run around and that's all great too. But you'll get actual coaching here from the Diamondbacks Baseball Academy coaches. Yeah, and it's age appropriate. You know, if you get a young man like this in the cage there, who obviously wants to learn a little bit about hitting, get better at the plate, that Sean will coach him up. And the little kids that just want to play wiffle ball and run around and pick daisies, oh, they can do that too. <laughs> Yeah, Sean works all season long and all the Diamondbacks uh, youth camps the academies fantasy camp. They have a great full time coaching staff that works with the uh, fans from all over the state of Arizona. And that goes on all night long here at Chase Field. One and two on Gregor Blanco. Candy's a pretty good cook too. He had the grill going. It was a gorgeous night in Arizona last night. You know who was surprisingly uh, effective with the bat was Leo Gilmartin. Really? Oh, Leo got in there. Yeah. And he took some hacks. He also trounced me in ping pong. Leo, I bet you didn't know this, is an excellent ping pong player. I did not know that. He's, it's like playing Forrest Gump. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he's slicing it and dicing it and cutting it and slamming it. I didn't stand a chance. I was overmatched. That's good to know. There is Leo. Right behind the governor, Greg Schulte on D-Backs Radio. Now, I know he doesn't look like a great ping pong player like there. He's obviously focused on his duties, but I'm telling you, man, he can play ping pong.
I say that's good to know as Blanco looks at a call third strike on the inside part of the plate. Leo and I have been known to place a wager on friendly competition well, from time sure, to time. Just and once in a while. At some point there will be a ping pong table available and I don't want him to bamboozle. It's good to know that. Uh, yeah he's a ringer. Uh, by the way I want to be there when that happens. That'll be fun. <laughs> Peralta singled his last time up. Zach Davies, boy, he's in the rocking chair right now. He sit down eight straight. He's got four strikeouts, trying to strike out the side here in the fifth. We will stay here after this half inning for more Tory Lavello. If you're just joining us, Tory, uh, the Diamondback skipper, wore a Fox Sports Arizona microphone for us during batting practice and walked around joking around with some of his players. We'll have that for you. So no commercials after this half inning. We'll stay right here and give you more of Tory mic'd up. So don't miss that. Seventy pitches for Davies, thirty-eight for strikes. Two and two. Diamondbacks. Boy, Davies, you know, has really pitched well. It's four three. Think okay, close game. This guy's only given up two hits all night. One was the three run homer by Lamb in the first. The other was the Peralta single in the third. In fact, that was the last Diamondback base runner. He set down eight in a row. Peralta shoots it toward the left field corner. Get out, ball. There it is. Freight trains on the run. Freight train will stop at second. It's his 12th double. There's the little freight train. And there's the big one. Once again, a great approach on a two seam fastball. A good pitch once again by Davies, but David Peralta spoils it, just slashes it down that left field line for a two out double. All right, a chance for Goldie now. He's been hit by a pitch, he's popped up. Ty runs at second with two down. Base hit. Here comes the freight train, and it's tied at four. The major league's leading hitter with runners in scoring position, Paul Goldschmidt. Talk about answering the challenge. Brewer scored three in the first. Diamondbacks came right back and scored three in the bottom of the inning. Here in the fifth, the Brewers put a run on the board in the top, and the Diamondbacks answer with a run of their own. Boy, Davies had set down eight in a row. Peralta fights one off, shoots it the other way into the corner. Goldie steps up. Now you got to deal with Jake Lamb. The major league's RBI leader. <laughs> you know, I just thought of something. Guess how many outs there were when they just scored. <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this yeah. before. There were two. It has been unbelievable. Two outs just means nothing to this ball club. Doesn't mean a thing. Jake's looking pretty hitterish up there. You watch the way a guy takes the pitch. You watch the rhythm and timing of his setup in that batter's box. He looks like he's ready to launch another. And he launched one in the first, his 16th of the year, under the concourse in right center. There's that two seam fastball, just caught the corner, and it's one and two. Well, he, you know, for a guy that throws that pitch as often as he does, 
And it's coming in there, you know, 91 ish. He's really effective with it. Spots it most, pretty well. He keeps it out of the middle of the plate for the most yeah. part. He'll either start it right at a left handed hitter and tail it back to the inside corner or start it on the outside third of the plate and break it off the outside corner. Trying to get him to bite at that changeup up and away. Lays off and it's two and two. Owens would be next. He's got a real good mound presence. Never looks overmatched, never looks panicked. In control. Tried it again and again. Lamb laid off. Three and two. That'll get Goldie started from first. Ames playing behind the runner. VR backs up at second. Here it is. Pena can't hang on. Another change up. Three in a row. See Jake, everything's entered into the computer there. Okay, that's three change-ups in a row. Would he dare throw four in a row? And if he doesn't throw a change-up, what's he likely to go to next? Probably that two-seamer. Where is he probably going to throw it away? Some of the things you think about as a hitter waiting on that three-two pitch. Fastball away. Missed with it. Ball four. Second walk for Davies. Three straight have reached. All with two outs, and here comes Chris Owens. I know you've seen the movie Bull Durham probably a million times like I have, but the great scene where Kevin Costner steps out of the batter's box and he's, you can hear him talking to himself. Okay, <laughs> meet, bring me the heater, bring me the heater. You know, just trying to guess along with that pitcher on the mound based on what he's done to some of your teammates, maybe based on what he's done to you in the past. Trying to make an educated guess as to what pitch might be coming next. Eric Johnson, the Brewers pitching coach out there to work with his young right hander, Zach Davies, out of Mesquite High School in Gilbert. He's only 24 back in the valley. And finds himself in a 4-4 ball game. A run is in. Two on and two out for Chris Owings, who's 0 for 2. CO has twice grounded out to shortstop. Davies 80 pitches only 44 for strikes. Goldie at second lamb at first two down. Chris doubled twice had two RBIs yesterday and the win over the Padres. He's got RBIs now in four straight games. Curveball there and it's 0 1. Good crowd here tonight, a Friday night in downtown Phoenix, Arizona, with the roof open on this June the 9th. Just over 25,000 Diamondback fans here with us. Don't forget, fans, two more games coming up this weekend. Get your tickets, dbacks.com. Zach Godley pitches tomorrow night. Robbie Ray against Chase Anderson Sunday. That was close. That should be a fun game on Sunday the way Robbie Ray has been pitching and Chase Anderson has been really good lately. Both guys have been on top of their game recently. That's a 1-10 afternoon start. 7-10 tomorrow night Junior Guerra versus Zach Godley. Here's the 0-1 to Owings. Just with a fastball it's a ball and a strike. This weekend your last chance to see the D-backs before another long three city road trip so get out here. Roof is supposed to be open tomorrow night. Bobby Rail starts Sunday afternoon. Oh, it's nice here now. Mm. This is gorgeous. Beautiful. Just got a piece of that breaking ball.
the middle. Arcia gets to it and gets to the bag to beat Jake Lamb. Davy strands two, but the Diamondbacks get the tying run across. It's 4 4 as we head to the sixth inning. We'll stay right here, fans. And here's more of Tori Lavello, the Diamondback skipper, mic'd up for Fox Sports Arizona. Normally, when I talk to a reliever, I'm either taking the ball from him or handing him the ball. <laughs> so it's hard to establish a rapport with him and a relationship with yeah. him. And then it gives me a chance to tell Ray Fuentes, like, you're actually doing a really good job, Ray. And I know I, know I don't spend a lot of time telling you that, but you got, you got one of the hardest jobs in baseball. Like, coming off the bench, not playing every day, that's hard to do. You got 100 miles, no food. Can I bring a horse? No. You got to walk it. You guys would all be good participants on, uh, is it Survivor? Naked and Afraid? Oh, Naked and Afraid? Yeah. yeah. But not, yeah, Survivor's kind of like, that's kind of bootleg now. It's yeah, old. Um, yeah, they drop you into the wilderness and you, you find clothes. You, you'll find something to put on, right? You cover up. You bring your machete or whatever you bring. And you'd have no problem staying there. Wouldn't be the most comfortable thing, but wouldn't survive. That's the answer. What would you take? I wouldn't do it. I'd take, um, I'd call Uber. I'd Uber down. I don't know if I could do it. I'm that much of a city person. I don't know if I could do it. I'd probably start out, I'd probably start out with all the common things, like a flashlight, um, something I could kill things with at close range. I definitely would not bring a gun, because I would waste time trying to shoot it, to shoot my, my food. You're going hand-to-hand -hand combat. I would have to, like, one of those. Could you do a baseball bat? Yeah, but I'd have to sneak like up on it. You know how much easier it is to kill someone with a gun? But I wouldn't be, like, if you put Take it right there, Point I wouldn't four. be able to go, like, bam, and get it. With a shotgun, sure. Yeah. It's, shit, it's a shotgun shit. You guys so sneaking we'll... up on it. No. No? no? Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Now, that's a huge mistake. I mean, those three guys, Godley and Hoover and Chafin, you don't want to talk hunting and fishing with those guys. Especially if you're a self-admitted city boy. Because <laughs> those guys, that's the outdoor crew right oh there, boy, those three. Is it ever. Our ash line call to the bullpen. Here's the left uh, left-hander T.J. McFarland. He has just been outstanding, an ERA that's a half in 12 games. The rookie center fielder Brett Phillips leads it off and he squirts one away from Lamb and away from the shift. It's a leadoff single. Phillips going to sneak into second. Descalso bobbles it out there. And that may be E7. Leadoff single. No laughing matter here. Yeah, just beats the shift with a little ground ball through that left side. Yeah, he was going to stop there at first Short base. Shot. He saw the bobble by Descalso well, in the left field the and field. ends up safely at second on his belly with a leadoff double. Or a leadoff single, E7, excuse me. First diamond back error tonight. Orlando Arcia, a couple of infield singles. He's two for two. Pitcher spot is coming up next. Davies is in the on deck circle for Milwaukee. So Davies looks like he'll hit, but the bullpen is busy for Milwaukee. Jared Hughes, the right hander. Davies has put down a successful sack button each of his first two at bats in this game. Possibility of maybe leaving him in there, letting him bunt again. Good bunt here by Arcia, who can really run, and McFarland's got no chance. Phillips in at third. Boy, Arcia has kind of nickel and dimed him to death here tonight. Yeah, three infield hits. This one just a little bunt to the third base side. McFarland gets to it in pretty good shape, but Arcia. Way too fast down that first baseline. So that'll be it. Davies is recalled. And here comes trouble. It's big Jesus Aguilar. This guy can hit a baseball a long way. 283, five homers. And you were telling me, Bob, then 
when you were talking to Craig Council, he loves having this guy on the bench, right? Yeah, the secret weapon. He said, yeah, I love having a guy that could hit the ball up in the seats, drive it into the gaps. He said he kind of reminds me of a right-handed hitting a Rubio Durazo from back in the day, a guy that kind of lurking over there on the bench, and you figure out the best possible time of the game to drop him in there, and here he is. Mike Butcher out to the mound. Yeah, Aguilar has been a really good hitter for Craig Council lately. This is a guy Milwaukee picked up on waivers from Cleveland just before spring training opened. Aguilar wound up hitting over 450 this spring with seven home runs. Needless to say, he made the opening day roster, and boy, it's paid off big time. So McFarland in a jam here. Phillips at third, RC is at first. Nobody out. 4-4 ball game in the sixth. Aguilar hits for the pitcher Davies. Aguilar saw the batting average dip down to 200 for the year on May the first. Looked like maybe he'd ready to sort of fizzle out, but boy, since May the first, he's hit 325. He is a big dude up there too. 6 3 250. <laughs> How about that? Fast balls in the dirt. Aguilar ahead, two balls and a strike. This is a guy who's hit 140 home runs over parts of nine seasons in the minors. It's it hard to left, and that gets down. Phillips will score. Arce is going to come around as Descalso kicks it into the wall out there. And two runs are home at six to four. Aguilar comes through again for Craig Council. And again, Descalso had some problems in left field. A couple of different times. Looked like he kicked it further over into the corner, but when he went to retrieve it, he didn't pick it up cleanly the second time. It's up and out over the plate. That shows you how strong Aguilar is. He hit that ball off the end of the bat and still drove it down into the left field corner. Right there was the second mistake by Daniel Descalso, and Aguilar on at second base. Now 10 hits for Milwaukee. 6 4 ball game. Here's the leadoff man, Eric Silgard. Shows bunt, corners come in. Silgard so far 0 for 3. Good fastball from TJ, and it's one and one. They score. <laughs> They score that for Jesus Aguilar, a double and two runs batted in. So despite the fact that Descalso dropped it and then kicked it, they ruled that Arcia would have scored all the way from first. So no error, a double and two RBIs for Aguilar. He's at second, two runs in, still no outs. And a 1-1 count on Eric Sogard. Once that one foul, it's a ball and two strikes. He looks at strike three. 
Big strikeout for T.J. McFarland. Sogard 0 for 4. One down in the sixth. The dangerous Domingo Santana. He has doubled walk score to run. One for two. Uh, no pitch intentional walk here to Santana to set up a potential double play. Also sets up a lefty on lefty matchup between McFarland and Thames. You know, I'll say it again. I hated that rule when they passed it. Now I love it. Just move along. It was always funny when a guy would throw the ball over the catcher's head to the backstop on an intentional walk, but it happened like one out of every 5,000 intentional walks. So. Yeah. Not even once a year, but boy, this is, you know, you don't think about it. And although Chris Owings was talking about that at some point last week because of the real changes for the guy who's on deck. Right. Yeah. Because you're coming out, okay, I'm going to be on deck. I got a chance to sort of loosen up and get ready. And then suddenly you're up. Almost without a word, uh, no warning, certainly. So Thames, who was getting ready to get into the on deck circle and sort of prepare, finds himself right in the batter's box. Yeah. So that's a little jarring. Aguilar the runner at second Santana at first three Diamondback defenders on the right hand side of the infield. Oh and two. Well what a start it was to the season for Eric Thames. Came over from Korea. Nobody really knew what to expect. He hit safely in his first 12 games to start the year. And at one point in April, he homered in five consecutive games. I mean, it was a show every night with this guy. And of course, anytime you see somebody explode onto the scene like that, especially hitting long home runs, and with some whispers that maybe he's doing something uh, above the law. But as Eric Thames said, hey, I've got plenty of urine and plenty of blood. You can check me every day, and they pretty much have. Yeah, he has reportedly been drug tested a great deal already this season. Because as a, baseball gets nervous when guys have been away from the U.S. for more than one year, and they come back and they start hitting homers. That's kind of a, a red flag, but as you said, Thames has no problem. Yeah. Bring it on. One ball and two strikes. Second time in this at bat, he's fouled the ball off that front foot. He's got some good downward movement on that sinker. <laughs> T.J. McFarland, he just keeps hitting the top half of the ball and banging it off of that front foot. Got some Brewers fans with us. Of course, they trained at Maryvale, so there's some Brewer fans in the valley. Put up a fight here. This is a guy who became his own hitting coach when he was in Korea. Felt very isolated over there, the culture, the food, everything. So he had an apartment there and he just sort of locked himself in the apartment and watched batting tapes and videos over and over and over and just worked on his swing. Slicing foul and it stays one and two. EJ McFarland, eight straight games without giving up an earned run. Phillips opened up the inning with a single that rolled through away from the shift, and then RC the bunt base hit. 
Aguilar doubled home too. Now he's in a battle with Thames here. Still a ball and two strikes. Ninth pitch of the at bat on the way from TJ McFarland. Jesus Aguilar at second after a two run double. Domingo Santana at first after the intentional walk. TJ keeps looking for that ground ball. Finally wins the battle with a fastball. Two outs. Got it in there just far enough so Thames wasn't able to get a piece of it to stay alive. One more two seamer down and in. Swings right over the top of it that time. The dangerous Hernan Perez, who homered his last time up off Randall Delgado, his eighth of the year. DJ McFarlane has really been a solid contributor to this Diamondback bullpen, especially when you consider that he was let go by the Orioles right after spring training got started, picked up by the Diamondbacks. He'd spent parts of the last four years pitching for Baltimore. Done a great job here. It's the ground ball. Goldie gets over there. Nice range there by America's first baseman. And McFarland strands too, but the Brewers get to, they lead it 6 4. Backs trail the Brewers 6 4. Fans beginning June 15th. It's the U.S. Open at Aaron Hills just outside Milwaukee, Wisconsin. As Dustin Johnson looks to defend his title, the 117th U.S. Open Golf Championship begins June 15th on Fox FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning, and the new pitcher on in relief for Milwaukee. It's the right hander Jared Hughes. He signed with the Brewers. Right after opening day after he was let go by the Pittsburgh Pirates and this is his 25th appearance of the year. Daniel Descalso 0 for 2 with a couple of fly ball outs leads off the sixth.
Hobbs one out to left center. Perez is over there. And he's got it in the gap for the first out. Milwaukee Brewers bullpen. It's going to be tough to win the National League Central with numbers like that. Been a rough month for the Brew Crew Relief Corps. They really had a couple of tough ones against the Dodgers uh, last week. Dodgers came back twice late against Corey Knable, their closer. Well, they're certainly a surprise front runner here on June 9th in that division, especially considering they're ahead of the Cubs, who everyone assumed would uh, win the World Series and win 150 games, but uh, that hasn't quite worked out either. Nick Ahmed 0 for 2. So the question seems to be as Hughes tries the corner and misses. Can the pitching in Milwaukee hold up? Yeah. Well, we got a pretty good performance today from young Zach Davies again. But now it's in the hands of the Brewer bullpen. Well, Hughes has a really awkward delivery. It's like a right handed Alex Wood from the Dodgers. Same kind of herky jerky leg kick. He reaches back with that baseball and comes across his body. It's like a Swiss Army knife unfolding. Fastball missed and Nick is ahead 3 0. Nick Ahmed's been a hitter over his last 25 games. Nick is hitting 313 with four home runs. Taking all the way, it's 3 1. Nick had a pair of hits in his start in yesterday's game against the Padres. Broken bat bouncer to VR at second. Hey fans, the D backs will celebrate Independence Day early this year on the 1st of July. Game time is 7 10, and 20,000 fans will get the soft style State 48 patriotic t shirt. Then, after the D backs Rockies game, fans can relax as the roof opens up for a fireworks spectacular show presented by Gila River Casino. Secure your spot for the game and fireworks show now at dbacks.com. By the way, I've seen those T-shirts and they are really cool. Oh. Yeah, that's a good-looking shirt. Jeff Mathis, the catcher, pitcher spot up next, and the Herminator has been out for a while with a sore hand. Chris Herman is on deck. He would hit for McFarland should Mathis reach. And he's down 0-2. Jeff looking for a big two strike hit right here. He's in a one for 21 skid right now. One and two. For the left hander warming up at the Diamondback bullpen. And that's the strikeout for Hughes, who works a one, two, three, six. Diamondbacks trail the Brewers, six, four.
Big time to take a look back at this day in baseball history brought to you by Geico. You see the red seat there at Fenway Park, way back in the right field bleachers. Well, supposedly Ted Williams hit the longest home run ever at Fenway Park, 502 feet, landed approximately where that red seat is, which is highly disputed. Now I know you had your staff making phone calls, some inquiries were made all over the country, and you are doubting the legitimacy of that fact. Well, and far be it for me to doubt well, no. the splendid splinter, but however, guys that played a lot of games at Fenway Park, including David Ortiz said, to quote him, that's unhuman. <laughs> he said, well, I spent my entire career trying to hit balls into the bleachers in right field at Fenway Park, and I never came remotely close to that red seat. I asked Tori Lavello, who saw a lot of games at Fenway Park, he said, no way anybody ever hit a ball up there. And probably the surest authority, the guy that sits closest to that red seat for the Red Sox, my son Michael oh, said, well. no way. Just couldn't have happened, Dad. The integrity of that source is beyond question. <laughs> Yeah, the governor and I, when we were at Fenway Park last time, went out there and sat in that seat, and it is way out there. Yes, indeed it is. It's in uh, section 42, row 37, seat 21. It actually hit a man in his straw hat. But in the day, this is Pena who rolls one into center, leadoff single. There was actually no seat there, right? You're correct. It was just like a bench, and they were estimating that that's right about where it landed. And, uh, you know, some other sketchy research tells me that there was some construction going on at that time and uh, the players on the team at that particular time said it kind of changed the wind a little bit at Fenway Park so that could have entered into it as well it is a legendary clout by uh, the splendid splinter mm -hmm. Ted Williams so Pena to lead off single he's got three hits tonight Jonathan VR an RBI double in the first one for three Milwaukee has out hit the Diamondbacks tonight 11 to four Belted into left. First two have reached in the Milwaukee seventh. Bullpen is busy for the Diamondbacks. The bartender Tom Wilhelmson warming up in the Sanderson Ford bullpen as rookie center fielder Brett Phillips steps up. Phillips, who was who had had only three big league at bats coming into the game today, getting the start in center field for the slumping Keon Brock. Then he singled his last time up and scored a run. He's got Pena at second and VR at first. Nobody out. Goldie comes in from first. Phillips bunts at third base side. McFarlane has only played a first. Owings is there. The runners move up. Sacrifice one four. Brewers have executed that play very well tonight. Yeah, they really have. I was just looking it up in the media guide to see if Brett Phillips had been a bunter at the minor league level. He actually had one season. He put down 14 sack bunts. Hmm. Great counsel and his bench coach, Pat Murphy, former Sun Devil head coach. We're looking for a pinch hitter because the pitcher spot is up after the shortstop Orlando Arcia who has singled three times tonight. No one in the on deck circle but here comes Tori Lovello to check in with Nick Lance behind home plate. He's got Wilhelmson ready in the bullpen. And it looks like a double switch is in order. We'll sort it out when we come back. Diamondbacks trail the Brewers 6 4.
Chase Field is the voice of the ballpark. There he is, Mr. Chuck Drago. And it's Chuck's birthday today, All Chuck. Right. How you doing? Right, now we know Chuck's mom and dad watch every game. And so, Mom, happy birthday to your son, Chuck. The PA announcer and a great one here at Chase Field. He's a little upset that Noah Berlin was named Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, but that's another story. <laughs> Here's the bartender, Tom Wilhelmson. Double switch by Tori Lovello. It's a whole new battery as the Hermanator. Chris Herman takes over behind the plate for Jeff Mathis. So it's good to see Chris back. He's been battling that sore right hand. Herman will bat ninth pitcher spot now eighth for the Diamondbacks. Pena the runner at third, VR at second, one out. Diamondbacks trying to keep this a 6-4 Milwaukee lead. RC is so far three for three, three infield singles. Diamondbacks not playing all the way in defensively. That's uh, based on the speed of the runner at third base. Manny Pena, the Brewers catcher down there at third. Diamondbacks figure they can play an extra step or two deeper than they normally would to try to cut down that run at home plate. One and one. Fastball missed in at 96 miles an hour. It's two balls and a strike. Pitcher spot is up next for the Brewers. And Nick Franklin, the switch hitter, is in the on deck circle. He's been one of Craig Council's primary pinch hitters this year. Arcea knocks it out to right, backs up for Walter. Pena can come in here. VR heads to third, and it's 7 4 Milwaukee. So now Franklin is announced as the hitter for the pitcher Jared Hughes. Nick Franklin, 179, one home run. He is used almost exclusively as a pinch hitter by Craig Council. Mike Butcher going to make a mound visit here, as he often does with a pinch hitter. Franklin, it's really tough getting any offensive consistency when you pretty much get one at bat a game, if that. So in his last 19 games, he's just three for 23. Meeting on the mound as the Diamondbacks talk over Nick Franklin, what they want to do to him in this at bat. You know, we've talked a lot throughout the course of the season about areas of improvement for the Diamondbacks. The starting rotation is obviously a huge area of improvement. But another one is uh, the way the bullpen has been able to strand runners this year, inherited runners. Now, granted, Tom just gave up a sack fly to right field. That counts as an inherited runner scored against Tom Wilhelmson. But this season, as a staff, the bullpen, 18.5% of inherited runners have scored. Last year at this point in the season, it was 38%. Now that's a really good stat too because if you just look at ERA because the run is charged to McFarland it's not a true picture of how that reliever is doing when he comes into situations like this All right now from relief pitchers you really pay more attention to inherited runners that score and first batter efficiency does he come in and get the first guy out which is obviously considering the job enormous yeah because a lot of times those guys are going to be coming in from the bullpen with traffic on the bases already. If you can retire that first batter, you got a pretty good chance of getting yourself and your team out of that jam. Two balls and one strike on Nick Franklin. And he knocks it just over the glove of Jake Lamb. That'll get VR home with the eighth Milwaukee run. Unfortunately, a couple of inherited runners score here tonight. Franklin cues that right off the end of the bat, just over the head of Jake Lamb into left field for an RBI knock. Well, the Brewers got one in the fifth. They've added two in the sixth, and now two in the seventh. They take an 8 4 lead. Here's the leadoff man, Eric Sogard.
Sogard 0 for 4. He has struck out twice. Diamondbacks began the game tonight two and a half games behind Colorado in the National League West. The Rockies won again. They beat the Cubs 5 3 at Wrigley. And as for those L.A. Dodgers, you're hosting the Reds. Rich Hill on the mound. Dodgers lead Cincinnati 6 1. They're in the fifth. The roof is open here at Chase Field on a very Comfortable Friday night here in downtown Phoenix. The roof is supposed to be open tomorrow to fans, so come on down. dbacks.com slash tickets. Second game of this three game set. Zach Godley gets the ball tomorrow night against Junior Guerra. And then Robbie Ray versus former Diamondback Chase Anderson on Sunday afternoon. Sogard eight hits in his previous four games. He had a home run yesterday in Milwaukee, but 0 for 4 so far tonight. Domingo Santana on deck. That's belted deep right field. Peralta, he's got it! A running grab by the freight train. David Peralta just shy of the wall. We'll head to the home half of the seven Diamondbacks down four. There to win that inning, but it's 8 4 Milwaukee as we start the bottom of the seventh inning. What's next is brought to you by CenturyLink, game two of this three game set tomorrow night. Zach Godley on the mound against Junior Guerra. Diamondback Live pregame show starts at 6 30, a 7 10 first pitch here at Chase Field. Well, you got to love the Drake. Diamondbacks loved him the last time they faced him. It's the right hander Oliver Drake, who on May 28th at Miller Park. Gave up four runs against the Diamondbacks without retiring a batter. Love the Drake. He uh, followed Jimmy Nelson in a Seinfeldian palooza. <laughs> it was Jimmy and then the Drake. Jimmy's really pitched well lately. Chris Herman. First at bat tonight for the Hermanator. 155 and five home runs. And to leave. The game on Tuesday with a sore right hand back in the lineup for the first time since. There's a look at the defense against him. Yeah, it appeared Chris Herman injured that right hand on a swing. He took a really yeah. healthy cut at a pitch and then backed out of that batter's box, shaking the hand. Oh, what a grab by Eric 
at Thames. That was a short double for Chris Herman, but Thames takes it away. You'd be smiling too if you made that catch. That ball was scalded, headed for the right field corner, and Thames didn't even have a chance to take a step. Just from his position, made a dive, kept that ball out of the outfield. Wow. I'm not even so sure he knew he had it. <laughs> he didn't. He looked behind him. No, not there. It's in the glove. Gregor Blanco. Well, the D backs. He thought with Jake Lamb getting that three run homer in the first inning, they'd be on their way to another big night, but they've got only four hits tonight. They've been out hit by the Brewers 13 to 4. Peralta has a single and a double. Goldie an RBI single. Lamb the three run homer, and that has been all the offense. And the splitter up now a fastball up. Two and two on Gregor Blanco. There's David Peralta two for three tonight he'll be next. Another fastball up and in Blanco. Staring him down. Delivery. It was a hanging changeup from Oliver Drake. Brett Phillips had some issues with it out there in center field. Blanco never breaks stride, ends up at third base. Boy, Gregor Blanco in his last 10 starts is hitting over 320. He's walked and tripled tonight. He's already scored a run. Now he's at third. One out, David Peralta, who's two for three. D backs trying to get back in this thing, down four in the seventh. After grounding out to second base in his first at bat, David Peralta went to the opposite field. His next two times up for base hits against Zach Davies on sinkers low and away. Stayed right on him, drove him out to the opposite field. That's a foul ball. You saw the right hander Jacob Barnes warming up in the Brewer bullpen. Yeah, given that approach that David had in those two at bats against Zach Davies, I would expect the Brewers to try to come inside in this at bat. Good crowd here tonight, just over 25,000 with us. Base hit. Peralta knocks in another run. Blanco scores, and it's 8 5, his third hit tonight, the freight train. Trying to come in on him there, but Oliver Drake let that pitch stray out over the plate a little bit too far. That's five runs. We'll take the tacos. We'll take the tacos. Need three more, though. Here comes Derek Johnson, the Brewers pitching coach, out to have a word with the Drake. They got Barnes working in the bullpen. Another right hander. Goldie is the hitter. Big hang with a 
them after that hit that should have been a double to start this inning. Then they'd really have something going. The run is in, just one out. Peralta at first. Here's Goldie. An RBI single his last time up. Brewers put three infielders on the left hand side. The right hand side of the field is wide open. Thames holding Peralta on the bag at first. This year, a 381 hitter in his home ballpark. Fastballs a strike, and it's one and one. to center base hit three consecutive hits for the Diamondbacks and the major leagues RBI leader will be the tying run at the plate here comes Jake Lamb now back. Third base. great council the Brewers do have one left hander on the staff Josh Hader was just called up but that's the right hander Jacob Barnes he gets Jake Lamb tying run at the plate in the seventh. Diamondbacks have a run in tying run at the plate Jake Lamb with his 56 RBIs and the pitcher is Jacob Barnes who pitched yesterday in Milwaukee against the Giants and took his first loss of the year he faced five batters and didn't retire a single one hey, you mentioned Greg Council with one lefty in the bullpen he didn't even have that when we went to Milwaukee earlier this year but uh, Jacob Barnes is one of those right handers that gets out lefties pretty effectively they're 11 for 55 this season that's a 200 batting average against left handed hitters lamb a three run home run in the first is 16th of the year leading the major leagues in runs batted in tying run at the plate one out in the seventh. In with a fastball and it's one and zero. Oh. Here's how the Brewers line up defensively. R.C. the shortstop behind the bag at second. Sogard all by himself on the left hand side. Nice block by Pena back there and it's two and zero. Oh. Boy Jake Lamb counting tonight. 
33 RBIs in his last 27 games. Two balls and no strikes. Peralta's at second and Goldie's at first. Three and oh. Owings on deck. Absolutely, Jake Lamb would have the green light here, three and oh, if he gets a pitch to his liking. Looks at a fastball at 97. It's three and one. Phillips in center, a couple of steps over toward the pool. They give Jake most of the left side. Big pitch here on three and one. Walked and bases are full. Four straight have reached with one out. Owings will bat. The go ahead run at the plate and one out. CO tonight 0 for 3. Bases for Diamondbacks. Peralta's at third. Goldschmidt at second and Lamb at first. Diamondbacks on this homestand. Four for four with the bases loaded, nine runs batted in. CEO doubled twice, had two RBIs yesterday. He's got RBIs in four straight games. And he's in a huge spot right here. <laughs> I like the way he thinks. Track. He's got it. Here comes Peralta. Goldie moves up. Lamb as well, and it's 8 6. Didn't miss by much the RBI for Owings. Boy, one more granola bar, and that ball gets up into the front row out there, deep into the gap in left center. Perez had enough time to get underneath and make the play, and heads up base running by all three, tagging and advancing 90 feet. Critical because now a Descalso single can tie the ball game. Daniel 0 for 3. Ball one. Descalso has hit safely in seven of his last eight starts. He homered here yesterday. That's in there for a strike. It's one and one. Sanderson Ford bullpen, Archie Bradley and Andrew Chafin. Cutters in the dirt, two balls and a strike. Paul Goldschmidt at third, Jake Lamb the tying run at second, two outs in the seventh. Yar backs up on the grass at second. Three and one. Ahmed on deck. Rally caps are in place. Two runs home so far in this D-back seventh. Three one to Daniel Descalso. Manny Pena gets a late timeout.
Ball four. The bases are loaded again. And Nick Ahmed is the hitter. Nick tonight 0 for 3. Derek Johnson, the pitching coach, a slow walk out to the mound. Well, Nick, nothing yet tonight. Three ground ball outs. But in his last 25 games, he's hitting well over 300. Bases loaded, two down. Tapper back to the mound. Barnes collects it. And that's the inning. But the Diamondbacks get two. They're back within two as we head to the eighth. The three game series. Our Chaz Roberts air conditioning and plumbing note here for you. Chaz Roberts has helped thousands of people in the community and they'd like to give back by continuing their AC giveaway. You can nominate a deserving family or a nonprofit organization that needs a brand new AC unit. Log on to ChazRoberts.com slash cool play and submit your nominations. Entries are due June 30th. Tom Wilhelmson back out there to face Domingo Santana to open up the eighth inning. Breaking balls in there. Santana has doubled, scored a run, and walked twice. He's hit safely in nine straight games. Broken bat rolls to Lamb at third. The bat is in the outfield. Yikes. Bat went farther than the ball. A lot farther than the ball did. <laughs> there you see it goes sailing by. Good fastball that time by Tom Wilhelmson. Got right in on the hands of Santana. Shattered that bat. Well, Andrew Chafin, the left hander, is warming up in the bullpen. You've got Eric Thames coming up. Tori Lavello double switching back after this.
D-backs deficit. Milwaukee leads it here. They've out hit the Diamondbacks 13 to 7. New pitcher for the D-backs. Our ash line call to the bullpen. The left-hander Andrew Chafin brought on to face Eric Thames. Out of a double switch by Tori Lovello as Brandon Drury checks into the game. Takes over second base. Nick Ahmed is out. Chris Sellings moves over to shortstop. Andrew's been on a really nice run lately over his last 15 appearances totaling 13 in the third innings he struck out 24 opposing batters. So Drury at second. And Seal with short. He'll go out to right field. The shift is on for Thames. Additional defensive changes. Now it's second base. Now Thames is a guy who does hit left handers. He's batting 250 versus lefties this year with five home runs. Brandon Drury will bat eighth now and lead off the bottom of half of this inning. Pitcher spot now seventh in the Diamondback order. Oh, give me a break. Rolls it right down that left field line, which was wide open. Descalso kicks it around out there, and Baines has the easy double. Eleventh two bagger of the season for Thames. It got jammed that time inside out swing. A little roller down that third baseline goes for a double. What can you do? Yeah, the shift giveth and the shift taketh away. You actually could do that nicely. <laughs> Hernan Perez, homered in the fifth, is eighth this year. Perez usually swings pretty early in the count. He's not a guy that sees a whole lot of pitches. So he gets one to his liking early. He's swinging. Nothing yet. It's 2 0. Surprised he took that first pitch. It was in the strike zone, down near the bottom of the strike zone, but in her third of the plate. Andrew Chapin did not get the call from Nick Lentz behind home plate. You're going to have most of the big boys coming up here, eighth and ninth, so you want to keep this a two run gap if you can. Thames at second and one out. Chafin having trouble here. It's 3 0. Well, there's Hader, the left hander, just got called up. Carlos Torres, the right hander. Going to send Perez on down to first base with the intentional walk here and take their chances with the catcher Manny Pena. Well, Pena's had a really good day. He's three for four, two doubles and a single. He's got two RBIs and he scored twice. Pena has now hit safely in six of his last seven games. Got the batting average up to 305. Dodgers are still leading Cincinnati. It's 6 1 LA in the seventh inning at Dodger Stadium. Rockies won again. They beat the Cubs at Wrigley 5 3. Thames, the runner at second, Perez at first. In the air, right field, Peralta's got to come in. Two outs. Jonathan VR, the switch hitter. 
He struggled from both sides of the Second plate base, this year, but Jonathan 224 as a left handed hitter, 172 as a right hander, and all of his power, well, five of his six home runs have come from the left side. He was in a six for 40 slump coming into the game tonight, but he's single doubled, got an RBI, he scored a run. Two on and two out. Nice slider by Chaffin and it's 0 and 1. Always got to keep an eye out with VR. He will bunt for a base hit. He does that a lot. Tried to do it earlier in this game. Lamb is well back at third. Side move just to keep an eye on things. Well, there's no defender close to him out there. Now Brandon Drury will cheat in a little bit from second base. And Diamondbacks middle infielders are split wide apart, and Eric Thames not a guy that's going to steal a lot of bases, but if you give him a walking lead out there at second. Well, Chafin's up to something. He saw him signal Chris Herman to come out to the mound, so he's got something on his mind here. I guess he wanted to spot yeah. the fastball at 95. I want to throw a fastball at 95 right down the middle. <laughs> see if he'll take it. He did. Sliders missed and it's two and two. Red Phillips, the rookie, on deck. Diamondbacks in the bottom of the eighth inning will have Drury, Herman, and Blanco, eight, nine, and one. And then the big boys behind that. Two and two to Jonathan VR. Another slider missed again. The count is full. Two on, two out, three balls and two strikes. Thames, the runner at second. Perez at first. Goldie plays behind the runner down there. They'll be off of the pitch. Runners on the move. Foul behind Ed Cedar at third. Chafin wanted to throw that fastball, got it for a strike. He's missed with two straight sliders. Here's another 3 2 to VR. There go the runners. Reaches out and just gets a piece of that fastball.
Runners go. Called strike three. Fastballs in there. And Chafin strands two. He keeps it an 8 6 ball game. We get set for Diamondbacks Live, presented by CenturyLink, our post-game show. Landry Chafin out of the jam there. We've been spoiled with some great pitching of late, but this is a higher-scoring game. Gracie, how are the D-backs going to win this one if they uh, pull the comeback off? Well, once again, Jody, they've shown they love hitting at home, and it's 8-6 to six right now. Something tells me the final score is not going to be 8-6. to six. Diamondbacks need to get something going, and quickly. You're feeling it. All right, guys, we will see you it. after the game. Yeah. No, you guys are right. Down to their final six outs. Here's Carlos Torres, the right-hander, on to start the bottom of the eighth inning. His 32nd appearance, a 4-2-2 ERA. He pitched nearly two innings yesterday in Milwaukee in their loss to the Giants. 13 walks in his 32 innings of work. Opponents hitting nearly 300 against Torres. Well, BB, your staff a little more reliable tonight than normal. They've come up with this little nugget. How about this? The Brewers. Have been outscored 66 to 32 in the eighth and ninth innings this year. And the Diamondbacks have 48 runs in the eighth inning. That's the most in the major league. So all the pieces are in place. I like it. Brandon Drury will lead it off. His first at bat tonight. Checked into the game as a defensive substitution. 285 homers. Drury, Herman, and Blanco, 8, 9, and 1. In the Arizona eighth inning. D backs have been out hit 14 to 7. They trail at 8 6. That's headed for the right field corner. Santana won't get there. Brandon Drury gets it started. Well, Gracie was right. It's not going to stay 8 6. I don't think so. Center cut fastball for Brandon Drury. A little bit of a tardy swing, but gets the barrel on it down that right field line. One bounce up and over the fence into the Brewers bullpen, which is suddenly very busy again. <laughs> Here is Chris Herman, his first time up in the seventh inning. He hit an absolute missile down the first baseline that Eric Thames reached out and snagged. It would have been a sure double for Chris. Fastball up and it's 1 0. Brewers have three defenders on the right side of the infield. There's Hader, the left hander, on the right there. He's one of the top pitching prospects in all of baseball. He's got a strong hair game as well. Corey Knable, the right hander, warming up. Swing and a miss. Cutter from Torres, and it's 1 and 1. A lot of room right now for the Herminator in right center field.
Broken bat, and that one is snagged by VR. What a play! Oh my goodness. And is he injured? Jonathan VR just saved a run. Boy, Chris Herman should have two base hits over there, but he's 0 for 2, and now they check on Milwaukee's second baseman. Boy, what a play. That looked like that was through into right field for an RBI base hit, but out of nowhere, VR, that diving attempt, fields the ball behind him, makes the throw on to first base, and then uh, goes down in obvious pain out there. Not sure exactly what the issue is. Looked like he was grabbing at his lower back. Oh, what a play. Well, that's twice Chris has hit the ball over there. They both should have been base hits, and he's got nothing to show for it. Two outstanding defensive plays. One by Thames, and now one by VR. Well, that that should have made it a one-run game right there, easy. Stan Wright, the head athletic trainer for the Milwaukee Brewers, a Valley resident. Tending to VR out there. Once again, it looks like the lower back. Very slowly trying to get him up on his feet. Boy, he hit that ground hard. You could see on that last replay, it was way up in the air and came down bang on that ground. I was thinking initially he might have just knocked the wind out of himself as hard as he hit the ground, but uh, obviously feeling it in that lower back. Now, if he has to come out of the game, it's a little bit of an issue. They've used Nick Franklin already as a pinch hitter. I'm not sure they have another infielder that they can go to. And he's going back down again. Well, Aaron Perez could come in from left field and play uh, yeah. at one of the infield positions, and Keon Broxton Keon still on Broxton the bench. Probably come into the ball game in the outfield. I'm not sure he'd have another choice. Yeah, I don't mean to be unsympathetic, but this is a momentum rally killer here. Either you can play or you can't play. Let's go. It doesn't look like he can get up. Tried to and it had to go back down. I think they're waiting on the cart to come in from the right field corner. Broxton is coming out to the outfield now. And Perez is in by the dugout. He might be changing gloves over there. Broxton number 23 is trying to find a. Throwing partner here to warm up. We talked about the versatility of Aaron and Perez earlier in the ball game, and it may come into play right here because of the injury to Jonathan VR. Yeah, they're going to need the cart because VR cannot get up and leave under his own power, so we certainly hope he's okay. Broxton right by first base now, warming up, tossing with Eric Thames. Perez is right by the dugout. Looks like Broxton's going to go to center. Brett Phillips will move from center to left, and Hernan Perez uh, could possibly play second or third. Now Phillips is out there in left now. Yeah, Sogard's played a lot of second base. Mm -hmm. Perez has played more third. But the concern right now is for Jonathan VR, who has to leave with the assistance of the cart. After making a sensational defensive play to save a run and take a base hit away from Chris Herman. Well, he's really having a tough time.
doesn't look like he's able to sit. Well, anybody that's had lower back issues. Uh, anytime you try to move anytime you take a deep breath any movement whatsoever can be extremely painful. You're just trying to find a way to get him onto that cart. They keep asking him questions and every time his response is to shake his head no can you do this can you do that. Now they may have to just try to wedge him onto the back of that cart and hold him as tightly as they can so he doesn't move around too much as they make an effort to get him back into the clubhouse where the medical staff can really take a look. Looks like Solgard is going to play second base. And thankfully Jonathan VR is being attended to as he heads to the clubhouse. As he goes through the bullpen right there, but once he gets uh, clear of that Brewers bullpen, it'll be smooth sailing around to the clubhouse. All right, you were right, BB. It looks like Sogard will be at second, Pettez at third, Broxton in center, and Phillip moves over to left. So Sogard is the new second baseman replacing VR. He moves over from third. Perez comes in from left and takes over at third base. Phillips moves from center to left. And Broxton replaces Phillips in center field. So there's one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Brandon Drury's at third now, and here's Gregor Blanco. Blanco tripled and scored his last time up. Strike one. Blanco in his last 10 starts is hitting over 320. He has walked, tripled, and scored twice tonight. Drury at third, one out. One and one. Right there with one swing of the bat. You don't usually see him do that pull lift swing trying to get the ball in the air to right field. Sure enough, lines it right to Sogar to move to second. Well, that's the two hits in this inning the Diamondbacks should have had. In center field, number 23. David Ian Peralta, a big night, three for four. Two singles, a double, an RBI. He scored twice. They've got the lefty hater warming up in the bullpen, one of the top pitching prospects in all the baseball. And now Craig Council checks in with Nick Lentz. Take a break from Chase Field. Jet Bandy coming in to catch. Hater to pitch. Back after this.
have a top pitching prospect, the left-hander Josh Hader, who was called up today from AAA, ready to make his major league debut, warming up in the bullpen, but instead to face the left-hand hitting David Peralta. Council goes to the right-hand closer, Corey Knebel, who is number one among major league relievers with 54 strikeouts. All new battery for Milwaukee. Jet Bandy replaces Manny Pena behind the plate. So Bandy will bat ninth. Pitcher spot now fifth in the Milwaukee order. Peralta the hitter. Drury at third and two outs. And that exhausts uh, Craig Council's bench. He only had four position players available off the bench. Jet Bandy being the last one. Peralta tonight three for four. No, we didn't go. Brian Gorman at third. It's one and zero. David, a big pinch hit, two-run single yesterday, two singles and a double tonight. Big curveball from Corey Canable, and it's one and one. Canable last pitched Wednesday in their win over the Giants, got his seventh save, worked a one, two, three, ninth. Big fastball, 98 up, and Peralta's down one and two. Canable can really bring it. You're right, he's got a big fastball in the upper 90s, but that snapdragon curveball, a 12 6 curve, is uh, equally effective. He was the Brewers' pitcher of the month in May. Appeared in 13 games at a point seven ERA. And he strikes out Peralta with a hundred mile an hour fastball. It stays eight six Milwaukee. To the top half of the ninth inning, David Peralta against Corey Knebel there, that last at bat of the bottom of the eighth. Just a little too much fastball for David, able to check his swing on 98 above the top of the zone. There's that snap dragon curveball, and then rear back and throw it as hard as you can. 98 up above the zone, 100 just off the inside corner. 100 in like that, that ain't fair. No. So here we go to the ninth inning. Andrew Chafin still out there. Brett Phillips, the rookie, singled and scored in the sixth. One for three. Drury will stay at second. Owens, the shortstop, will move out to short right. See Jake Lamb halfway between second and third. Rockies have already won. They beat the Cubs 5 3 at Wrigley. Dodgers are leading the Reds 7 1 in the eighth inning in L.A.
D-backs have won a season high nine straight home games. That streak is in jeopardy here. Best home record in baseball at 24 and 8. Phillips gets the bunt down and it rolls foul. Phillips put down a successful sack bunt in the seventh inning and we mentioned at the time that he'd been a good bunter throughout his minor league career tried to take advantage of the shift that time but for some reason the ball rolled up the first baseline I think he was trying to push it to the third base side but <laughs> rolled foul nonetheless. Well he can do a lot of things it looks like other than just give you that goofy laugh he can get bunts down he runs really well plays center field he's hit some home runs in the minor leagues this year. He's got some tools. Nice left hand bat. Waves at that slider and that's the strikeout. Phillips punches out for the third time tonight. One down. Got to start him young here at Chase Field. Tori Lovello makes the slow walk to the mound. Orlando Arcia will be the hitter. And Silvino Bracho is on his way in from the Sanderson Ford bullpen. We'll take a break in the ninth. It's 8 6 Milwaukee. The Brewers 8 6. Here's the right hander, Silvino Bracho. Saw Silvino Bracho pitch the ball game. Oh, it was yesterday, actually. Yeah, worked uh, two innings, gave up just one hit, a single. Struck out a couple of batters in his two innings of work. Well, Bracho brought on to face Orlando Arcia, and the catcher, Jet Bandy, will be the on deck hitter. Orlando you mentioned uh, Orlando Arcia. Is Older brother Oswaldo in the D backs organization mm -hmm. down in Reno should give you his numbers because they are really good. 362 batting average in 48 games. He's got 14 home runs and 61 driven in. I think what? They got some guys at Reno that are just killing it right now. Bill DeMauro Vargas, Cattell Marte, they've all had great years. Oswaldo Arce's had a big year. Orlando Arce's had a good night, three for three. Three singles. He scored a run. He knocked in a run with a sacrifice fly his last time up. Yeah, it's going to get out of play. Diamondbacks in the ninth inning. We'll have the heads of state do up. Goldie Lamb Owings, three, four, and five. I'm pretty sure, top of my head, it was Corey Knavel who gave up that amazing home run that Chris uh, Ionetta hit at Miller Park. I think you're right. Yeah. yeah. So they were able to get to Corey Knavel in that game when Ionetta came up, two outs, ninth inning, and hit a home run to tie it off Corey Knavel. That was on the last road trip in Milwaukee. So we're not done yet. 
Well, I mentioned that the Dodgers had a couple of late comebacks against Knebel in their series at Miller Park. One and two on Orlando Arcia. That's a little bit new from Silvino Bracha. That pause at the top with that leg parallel to the ground. He still does that thing with his front foot. A couple of he'll move that front foot toward the rubber. Usually it used to be three times. Lately it's been two. There's one and two and set. No pause that time. And he didn't go, says Trip Gibson. So Bracho trying to change his times. The timing of his delivery anyway. That's a new uh, gimmick. Vandy on deck. Intentionally putting a hitch in your own giddy up. <laughs> One and two and sit. No pause that time. Hey, you'll notice he kind of jumped into the delivery that time quickly and then threw a change up. Mm, yeah. That's something that a pitcher will do. You know, as a hitter, you see that pitcher coming at you quickly out of his delivery, and you start to speed up at home plate to match his delivery, and then you throw a change up. Right, another one that time. It got away from him. Full count three and two. Well, RC has been a tough customer lately. Last 18 games, he's hit about 320. And he's three for three tonight. Tried the change up again. And it's a one out walk. Catcher Jet Bandy. First at bat tonight for Jet Bandy. Who took over behind the plate. He is really slumping right now. He's stuck in a four for 33 up there. Adding 242 on the year. Really good night at the plate for Orlando Arcia. He's been on base four times. Jet Bandy's been playing a lot. The bat starting to get exposed a little bit. Had a big April. Got off to a pretty promising start. He's a U of A guy. Played his college ball in Tucson. But since May the 1st, he's hit only 183. Slider that time from Bracho, and it's 1 0. So we've seen with Bracho the fastball, a lot of change ups. Slider that time. Some changes in the delivery. You can see that he's been toying around with a few things. Slider's in there for a strike, and it's 1 1. And if you weren't with us when we were in Miller Park, that is indeed his name, Jet. J E T T. It's a combination of his father, John, and his grandfather, Chester, who everybody called Chet with two T's. So they combined the John and the Chet, came up with Jet. And after that game, I went back to the hotel and downloaded a Wings album. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Jet. <laughs> two and one. Jet Bandy out of U of A, drafted by the Angels six years ago. It was a 31st round pick acquired by the Brewers in December. Part of a trade that sent catcher Martin Maldonado to Anaheim. Quick move over to first. Darcy is back in time. These Brewers like to run, but Darcy hasn't had much success. Only one out of four this season. Here's Robbie Hammock in the Diamondback dugout. Back 
Fastball got away from Bracho that time, and he's behind three and one after walking Arcia. You talked about some of the changes that Silvino Bracho has showed us here tonight. The, the quick pitch, the kind of hesitation in the middle of the delivery, the toe tap on the front side. The thing that concerns me is the glove flap. The glove flap. If you watch him when he comes up into his set position, he's flapping his glove, you know, so the hitter can't see him change his grip on the ball, but he never really comes to a complete stop. Marcia takes off. Curry can't handle that low throw. Pitch was a strike. It's a full count three and two, and RC is in at second. I mean, there are certain umpires in the major leagues that would interpret that as not coming to a complete stop because his glove is flapping and it's flapping, it's flapping. At some point, you have to come to a complete stop of everything. Hmm. Nick Lentz behind the plate tonight. I'm in back live post game show. Gracie standing by with Jody Jackson. That's coming up next on Fox Sports Arizona. You'll hear from Tori Lovello, get some reaction from inside the D backs clubhouse. Time and back live pregame show tomorrow comes your way at 6.30. Don't forget a later start than normal. We're 7 10 tomorrow night for Zach Godley against Junior Guerra. Full count on Jet Bandy, three and two. Oh, he dotted the fastball. Bandy knew it. Two down. Perfect pitch. You're right there. Eric Sogard. Can't do anything with that pitch anyway. Eric Sogard. 0 for 5 tonight in the leadoff spot. Boy, their Brewers have scored eight runs on 14 hits. Their leadoff guys 0 for 5. Just move with a fastball. It's 1 0. One thing about Bracho that they like. You know, he's got the ability to sort of rise that fastball. He can sink it a little bit. Fifteen pitches so far. More balls than strikes, however. And he keeps getting behind in counts. It's two and zero oh now on Sogard. Really want to keep this a two-run game heading into the bottom of the ninth. Goldie will lead it off. Robbie Hammock, Tori Lovello. Robbie had Bracho when he was managing in Mobile with the Bay Bears. Bracho was his closer. Did really well in the Southern League. The fly ball, center field, Blanco's there. So here we go. Diamondbacks down 8-6. And guess who's leading off the ninth inning?
Boston used to be Jim Rice and Fred Lynn in Arizona. It's Goldie and Jake Lamb. Corey Knable, the closer, who struck out David Peralta with a 100 mile an hour fastball to win the eighth, is back out there for the ninth. Goldie has singled in his last two at bats. He's two for three. Goldschmidt, Lamb, Owings, three, four, and five in the Diamondback ninth. Right field, Santana at the track, and he's got it. I tell you what, Diamondbacks got eight hits. They've got another eight hits that should have been hits. Yeah. Chris Herman, a couple himself. Goldie, that drive to the wall out in right field. They've got a lot of hard hit balls that have been caught by Brewer defenders. Jake Lamb, he's been most of the offense tonight. A three run home run in the first, his 16th of the year. He's walked twice tonight. Eight from Knable, it's one and one. Brewers, you're seeing why they're a good road team this year. They're 15 and 10 on the road. They've only lost two road series all season. Craig Council has his ball club playing very well away from Miller Park. One and two on Jake. 99 miles an hour that time. Canable first broke into the major leagues with the Tigers back in 2014. His average fastball was 94.3 miles per hour. It's gone up every year. Taking some vitamins. Missed at 99. Two and two. Diamondbacks trying to keep a season high nine game home winning streak going down to their final two out CO on deck. Got him at ninety nine. Fashion country hardball. I'm going to throw it as hard as I can toward the backstop, and you try to hit it. Well, you can see why no major league relief pitcher has more strikeouts this season than Corey Knable, the Brewers' closer. Last man standing is Chris Owing. Mark Grace, Jody Jackson standing by. Diamondback Live postgame show follows our ball game. Don't forget pregame show tomorrow night 6 30 7 10 first pitch. Zach Godley gets the ball against Milwaukee's Junior Guerra. Well oh, that's not fair drops a curveball at 82 in there. Throwing 99 hundred mile an hour fastballs you lob a curveball up there at 82. And then do it twice in a row. Now you got to be thinking a hundreds coming here. You throw another curveball. Just gets a piece. Dodgers now a final. They beat the Reds 7-2. Rockies won at Wrigley 5-3 over the Cubs. The backs will drop three back at Colorado in the NL West. They'll be 11 over 500. One and two to Chris Owings. Got him. Went back to that curveball and that closes it out. 
Knable struck out three of the four he faced, and he locks down an 8-6 Brewers win. Well, a game that started out.